and welcome to this week's episode of the Peter Parr Podcast, where we attempt to read every issue of The Amazing Spider-Man week, week by, by week, week, so you can be a Spider-Man expert as well. And on this podcast, we also talk about movies for the first, like, half hour or so, just the stuff we watch during the week. My name is Mike, and with me, as always, is my co-host... Sammy! bro. Bro, Hello, bro. Sammy. Hello. How, how is your week? How's life? Yeah. Since... Fine. Our last debacle. Oh, it's um, been a bit weird. I've had weird discoveries, but it's okay. I don't want to think about it right now. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys might hear that later on in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we, we have to get right into it because it's a new season. Uh, new listeners, potentially. Hopefully. Don't want to throw them off. Yeah, the don't throw them off the scent. Exactly, off the scent. Yeah. Yeah. We want them to hunt us down with their noses. <laughs> And smell this podcast from a mile away. <laughs> Got him. Uh, what did what did you watch or do this week? That's interesting. For our segment, we like to call this is the movie segment with Sammy and Mike. This is the movie segment. Hang in tight, my boy. Nice, cool intro. <laughs> <laughs> you made it yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Let us know what you guys thought of the intros last week and this week. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to change them this week. Probably not. Maybe next week. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, what did I do this week or read or watch or Yeah, see? that one. Yeah. Even though it's called the movie segment, we can talk about other things as well. Well, first of all, um, we just watched Rocket Man. Rocket by Man. By Dexter Fletch starring Taron Egerton. Dexter Fletch. Oh, yeah. That's the director, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's pretty good. He did Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, he's he did really well in Rocket Man. Let me tell you, dude, mm. it's fucking good. Like, go and see it. So much better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. is cancelled. This movie cancelled that movie. Yeah, we'll just get that out of the way now because I don't want to get too much into oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So exactly, yeah. Because like a lot of people like that. Yeah, movie. if you like it, good for you. I'm sure a lot of people probably don't like Rocket Man because they'd prefer it to be a Bohemian Rhapsody type movie. And if that's true, well, I got beef with you, but, like, we'll talk about that off air. <laughs> yeah. But Rocket Man, I liked a lot. I like that they made it a musical. Yeah, it's like not a just, real musical. Yeah, yeah, the way they used the songs, it wasn't just, here's Elton John's greatest hits. They weren't just, like, music videos in succession. No. They Even were, though they had lots of fantastical imagery. and Yeah. You know, but it was telling the story of exactly. conveying that feeling, Emotion. that moment in time. Yeah. How Elton perceived it. Exactly. Because the whole, the whole thing's got this whole framing device of Elton in rehab and he's recounting these events. Of his life, yeah. Yeah, so it's all him embellishing aspects of it or going into the nitty-gritty yeah. or making, you know, the his performances seem more fantastical or more, you know, exactly. exaggerating the moments, which is good because I don't just want to end the movie with 20 minutes of concert footage of, God, uh, Freddie Mercury singing that you could find online. Lip syncing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. I like that everyone actually sang in this. And yeah. it didn't sound overly like produced either. Like they yeah. were all vocally trained. It, it didn't like... sound like Aladdin. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll get into that later. Yeah. I forgot to write that down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it was so good, like in every aspect. Yeah. Um, Taron as Elton amazing, was great. Yeah. Even though you could be like, he doesn't look that much like him. It's he like, doesn't well, sound much like him, but he still was able to like. Yeah, do you think Rami Malek looks like Freddie Mercury? I know we said we weren't going to talk about this too much. Yeah, but, I know, like, but here we are. But he won an Oscar for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, Taron could be in the running. Who knows? I don't know. I hope so. But do you reckon they'll do it twice in a year? Twice. Twice. Not like do um, like biopics winning heaps of awards at the Oscars twice. Yeah, there's always a biopic they throw in there. Unless a like better one comes out later in the year that like pushes this out of the way. Then I don't know. Yeah, potentially. Goodbye. Uh, any other thoughts? Everyone. It kind of ended like a musical as well, without yes, getting to spoilers. It did. The I love that. The result. <laughs> result resolution. The resolution of the conflict between yeah. all the characters, where. Okay, so I, won't, I don't cool. want to get into spoilers, yeah, but you know how spoilers. in a musical, the all whole, the characters, yeah, all the characters come out and it's all resolved in like one scene. Yeah, they kind of do that in this. Yeah, but it works. It does. Sense. Yeah, because it's like again from Elton's perspective and like his reflection on his life, and yeah. that's kind of like the way they did it. It's really cool. And it's not like his whole life. No, kind of thing like a lot of these biopics are. It was it's his just life up, until up to a point, like the nineties, yeah. early nineties or something. 
Maybe Basically like when 80s. the song I'm Still Standing came out, which was 80s. So Yeah. 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 Well, Good stuff. Anyway, continuing on. I watched uh, the Aladdin remake because I was bored. God. And then it made me more bored and I almost fell asleep. Nice. I don't want to dunk on it too much because a lot of people like it. Because yeah. it's Aladdin, you know, it's just a, it's just a new version of Aladdin. And I'm not going to be overly cynical and be like, you know, they shouldn't have remade Aladdin because uh, the original is perfect. Because, you know, they've done stage musicals of Aladdin and other adaptations. So it's like they can have another one, sure, in live action. But Why not? Yeah. Um, I just wish it was better than it was. I haven't seen it yet. I'll probably see it like in a few weeks. So. I'm yeah. not in any rush See to go watch it. for cheap or for free. Yeah, like that's it's what not I mean. horribly offensive or disgusting. It's just. It's no Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> oh it, uh, it's, um, I can't. What do I think of Aladdin? I thought the main guy who plays Aladdin was charming. Like he was really good in the role. Yeah. He looks really fresh. Like. But yeah, much like, I mean, we're just talking about Rocket Man, how the musical sequences and that was so like fantastical and magical. But also like drove the plot forward. Yeah. yeah. And Aladdin, the musical sequences, they feel so stilted and low energy Ew. and like boring. Except I think a friend like me, that was a fun sequence because it was a yeah. genie being like, Yo, my name is Will Smith. I came <laughs> out of a lamp. And I was in a show called Fresh and he's Prince. Doing all these like cool transitions going like <laughs> and like yeah. making puppeteering Aladdin and stuff yeah. like that. It was the only scene where visual ideas were being implemented into a sequence where I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But then, you know, the one jump ahead of the bread line, mm-hmm. that whole song was so like mm-hmm. awkward. It just like kind of starts like in the middle of him, like on the run. He's like one jump ahead of the bread line. And he's like not even like dancing or doing any smooth like choreography to it. He's just kind of running through like, uh, it's so oh, God. It's, it's weird. I want to it didn't feel like myself. it just happened. Like it just felt like, okay, just we, like, we've got to put the song here because it was in the just, original. Psh, we'll just psh, put it here. And yeah. Guy Ritchie, because Guy Ritchie directed it, I think Guy he was Ritchie. probably like, oh, my style's not coming through enough in this. Let's do speed ramps and weird, <laughs> weird slow-mo sequences. God. Because he does that a lot, doesn't he? He does, yeah. yeah. Like have you seen his Sherlock Holmes movies with no. Robert Downey Jr.? Wait, did he do Macbeth? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. He used to do like those British gangster films, like Lock, Stock, yeah. and Two Smoking Barrels and stuff like that. I've, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wouldn't, maybe not gangster, but like crime films. Yeah. But yeah, recently he's been, I think every movie he's been releasing since like the Sherlock Holmes ones, he's been losing his his Guy ritchie like progressively Aww. throughout each movie. That's really sad. It's a shame, yeah. Because yeah. Sherlock Holmes has still had it a little bit. And then Man from Uncle kind of had some Guy ritchie Then he made that King Arthur movie. That's right. It was a King Arthur movie. I was like, I knew it was oh, like, yeah, 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 medieval British I never saw thing. that one, but from what I've seen, it's not very Guy ritchie Yeah. And then he made Aladdin, which if if I didn't see that Guy Ritchie directed it, then I would have no idea. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there was one cool bit where I imagine they shot the sequence in, uh, oh, what do you call it? Like a sped up version of the song as they're like running through yeah, the marketplace. Yeah, just to slow it down. Yeah. But then um, it's playing in slow motion. But the their, songs in their real lips time? are singing like in real time. I was yeah. like, that's a cool yeah. idea. Never happens again. Oh. So, yeah. And I didn't like how all the actors' voices were very clearly manipulated in post. <laughs> it's not auto tune. A lot of people have been saying they auto tune the voices. No, so it's not auto tune. It's, it's called pitch shifting. Yeah, it's like automated pitch correction where they. If an actor can't hit the note, they, like, isolate that section and move it up on, like, what do you call it? Like, the key. On the MIDI key. On the MIDI key. Yeah. So it's literally, like, imagine you're just putting your voice through, like, a keyboard and being able to play the notes of someone's voice in a keyboard. Yeah. That's what it's like. It's like those people on Facebook when they sample a sound and they put it on the keyboard and it's like. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> like in electronic songs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's supposed to sound like that in electronic song. Basically, yeah. Yeah, the girl who played pri- uh, the girl who played Princess Jasmine, she had a good voice. Yeah, she was probably the most trained vocalist of them all. Oh, that's nice. And Will Smith did good raps. He didn't do that's good singing. All he though. can do. <laughs> like a friend like me, good. And that was in his wheelhouse. That was like Fresh Yo, Prince. I'm style. the Fresh Prince. 
Look yeah. at me do a rap. I'm blue. And then <laughs> when he did I'm blue. Prince Ali, Dabba D, Dabba every Dabba. note that he couldn't hit, you could hear like, <laughs> like it was being moved up or down. <laughs> It's like the, it's so hard to make it sound natural when you pitch shift. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's even weirder because he's not even belting out the notes. It's like he's just singing like at normal. Oh, God. I think that's so why it like didn't feel very grand. Yeah. Yeah. There's one bit where they, because they added new songs for this. There's one bit where Princess Jasmine has a new song. Oh, okay. And that bit was good and powerful because she was actually projecting her voice. But whenever Will Smith's singing, he's like, Prince Ali, fabulous he, Ali Abba, <laughs> It just, I don't know. It just doesn't sound as like, because that song's meant to be like his introduction as a fucking like, you know, like yeah, and royalty and the shit. The choreography and that's so slow as well. It's meant to be. A lot of people I, have probably seen the clip on yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's supposed to be a big moment in the whole. Yeah. Movie. I just wanted some of that, that Disney magic, but it, instead it was just So boring. they gave it all to Rocket Man. <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway. They changed the ending, which I thought was interesting, but also I was what like, the "What? Fuck? They had like a big How do you change CGI the ending chase to scene. Aladdin? That's like I don't know. Yeah, well, they they wanted to give Jasmine more of a like stronger role. Or yeah, stronger presence, not just like a damsel good. in distress. But then they make things more extreme, and I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> like, there's a extra like magic carpet chase scene, and you know, Iago the the parrot. Yeah, the parrot. They turn him into like a big demon, and he's like. Oh, like a demon parrot, like floating. Like, oh my God. It's like bigger the than the carpet going, like chasing them through <laughs> the streets. I'm like, what? Okay. The way I'm picturing sure. it in my head is probably not the, not like any way the same as what it is in the movie. Not, but, but that's yeah. enough about Aladdin. We talked about yeah, that more we, than Rocket Man. Yeah, exactly. We don't I feel need... like when you don't like a thing, you have more things to say about it. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. Because you can point out more things that are wrong. Yeah, and I didn't dislike it. It was perfectly fine. It's yeah. Like, on path that Beauty of the Beast, Beauty and the Beast, sorry. Remake. I never saw that. It looked I boring. I did and I forgot what happened in it. I mm-hmm. just remember Emma, not Emma Stone, Emma Watson was pitch corrected in that as well. She was meant to be in La La Land, but she took Beauty yeah, and the Beast I'm, instead. I'm glad she wasn't in La La Land. Yeah. Emma Stone is perfect in that. Yeah. And it wouldn't have been Ryan Gosling as her. Well, no, Ryan Gosling was supposed to be in Beauty and the Beast. What? Yeah, I know. Weird. Hey. It's weird. So but who would turn have been, that down for La La Land? Who would have been Emma Watson's Ryan Gosling in La La Land? Like who? Because they yeah. would have got someone around her age. No, they, it would have been Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling and Emma Watson. Yeah. What? No. Yeah. I would hate that. Yeah, I know exactly. They because give off different vibes. Because oh, maybe not, but I'm pretty sure it is because um. Ryan Gosling turned down Beauty and the Beast for La La Land and Emma Watson turned down La La Land because she was in Beauty and the Beast. So maybe they swapped yeah. because maybe there was a different Ryan Gosling in La La Land. Yeah. No, didn't Damien Chazelle want Miles Teller or something? Oh, probably, yeah. Miles Teller would be shit yes, no, in La La Land. I remember Land. hearing about Not this. shit, but like it's he coming, just yeah. wouldn't work. It's coming back to me now. I think they wanted Miles Teller and Emma Watson. Oh, that's La why. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there you go. Because that They swapped. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. I they think swapped movies. <laughs> when um, Emma Watson left, they got rid of Miles Teller as well. Miles Teller was pissed. Oh, Lord. I remember seeing... <laughs> uh, I can't remember if this was oh. real or not, but I remember seeing like... There was a text. I was like, Marcella going like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> to Damien Chazelle. Yeah. I don't know if I hallucinated that or not, but I remember seeing that and thinking that was funny. That is funny. I'm going to look that up, actually. Yeah, um, what were we talking about? Aladdin. Uh, yeah. yeah. Enough go, about Aladdin, if, basically. If the trailers of Aladdin seemed good to you, then probably go see it. If they didn't, then you should be fine to skip it. You're not missing out on anything mm. if you've seen the original. Yeah. So... While you're looking up that, I rewatched Baby Driver last night. Yes. First time in a little so while. Good. But I'd seen it heaps of times when it first came out, so I gave it a break. Yeah. Because I saw it like three times in theaters, then I watched it heaps on Blu-ray. Because the Edgar Wright commentary track, I was like, I need to hear all of this. Wait, did you watch it with the commentary track? Not yesterday, but I've watched it with the commentary track before. Okay. Because I really like Edgar Wright, of course. If you know me, you know I like Edgar Wright. Yeah. I don't like to go on about it, though, because it seems like such a thing now. It's like, you like, you like Edgar Wright. Why don't you like real cinema? It's like, shut up. 
Real cinema. What is real cinema? Shut yeah. up. I've been seeing this a lot on Twitter recently. I think I think we're going to delete Twitter for a while soon. People who think there is real cinema are the same people that like worship Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, like whenever I see someone like talk, like gushing over a blockbuster film they're like on Twitter, there's always someone who replies like, oh, watch more movies. It's like, have you only seen like five movies? Oh like, God. stop. They like a thing. Just, just leave them alone. Yeah, you can like things dick. and like still like other things. Like you can't – like. What you like isn't mutually excu- exclusive to other things that you like yeah. or dislike. It's so dumb. It's like people are not black and white. Like, I know. I mean, some people are. But... Sorry. That was a bad <laughs> Wait, race <hang> joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? Uh, what are we talking about? Baby Driver. Yeah, it's really Baby good. Driver. I know a lot of people don't like that movie as much as other Ed Grant movies, but it's it's different to his other movies in a way because it's not a straight up comedy. It's just a... We, you'd call it like a, a high, an action heist movie with a few little comedic moments in it. Yeah. You know? I need to see it again. I've only seen it twice. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. It gets better on rewatches, like all Edgar Wright movies do, because you yeah. notice little bits of foreshadowing. Like my favorite thing in it is one of my favorite little bits of foreshadowing is, you know, the start where he's flicking through TV. Yeah. And like every channel he flips through, Every like line that a character says on the TV is something Baby Driver says later in the movie. What? So like, there's a bit where it's like, That's so a kid saying, "You are so beautiful." Then when he meets um, Deborah at the diner, the first thing he says is, "You are so beautiful." <laughs> and then the next clip on the TV, a lot of people listening probably know this, but another clip on the TV, I, I think know it this. says, "Oh, what does it say?" Uh, there's another one, but he yeah. brings it up later. I oh, know it's like they grow up so freaking fast, don't they? And then when he's at the bank later on with Kevin Spacey's nephew. Oh, and they're yeah. having that little bit where he's like, mm, do you have a name, don't you? Or, and the bank teller's like, oh, how old is he? And he's like, oh, he's he's uh, four. And the kid's like, I'm eight actually. And he's like, they grow up so freaking fast, don't they? <laughs> and then the last one, of course, is the one everyone knows is the Monsters, Inc. bit. Because remember Kevin Spacey. I love Monsters, Inc. I actually watched that last night. Yeah, because Kevin Spacey says like, you wouldn't betray me, would you? Or something like that. Yeah. Marcel was like, you and I are a team. Nothing's more important to us than our friendship. <laughs> and then he tries to say it later on in the movie when he's trying to, you know, get Kevin Spacey but to help him. But he gets hit by a car. No, right? but then no. Kevin Spacey's like, enough of your Monsters, Inc. bullshit. Oh. I, I thought it sounded familiar. <laughs> 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 I, remember, I don't remember that. Because oh, really? I remember the no. first time I saw that, when he said that um, bit, I was like, oh, that means all the other channels probably were foreshadowing as well. Yeah, that's and cool. Were, Speaking yeah. of Monsters, Inc. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Going, I spoke too much about that one bit of Baby Driver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on a bit of a Pixar binge every night. I'm going to try and watch a classic um, like, in Pixar. In order or just No, no, no just any, one. like okay. whatever I feel like. Um, a classic Pixar movie. Yeah. Um, Two nights ago, I started by watching A Bug's Life, which is one of my favorite Pixar movies of all time. Still holds up. It's so good. It came out I've, the year I was born. I've never seen the whole thing. So good. I can't believe Ants and A Bug's Life came out in the same year because A Bug's Life is so much better than Ants, like ridiculously better. Anyway, that's just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, that's fine. But my opinion is right. So anyway. <laughs> Look, it's, it's called Ants though with a Z. That makes it automatically better. Animation's so creepy. Like the, is it called a bug's life? A bug's life, yeah. With a Z? No. So then ants is better. But the main character's called Flick with a K. F-I-L-K. Flick always has a K. F-L-I-K. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, it's got a better story um, and a better wow. score and everything. Um, so, yeah, Take last that, night ants. I watched Monsters, Inc. Again, like I don't have to talk about this. Everyone Again. knows how good. No. I mean, again, yeah, technically, because I've seen it before. Oh, yeah. Okay, I get you. <laughs> yeah. No, but like... I never saw the prequel. Anyways, keep talking. I, I, I'm never going to see it. Apparently, it's not that good. <laughs> I'll see it I'm one sure day. I'm sure it's fine. It's Pixar. Yeah. It's Pixar, yeah. Um, No, but I cried as I cry every single time when I watch Monsters, Inc. So there you go. Yeah. I Tonight. also cry at the bit where Mike Wazowski gets nutted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for no reason too. He gets nutted for literally no reason because he's trying to make Boo laugh and he nuts <laughs> right. himself and she didn't even see it. 
One of my favorite YouTube videos for, for those of you out there <laughs> is Mike. Mike Wazowski gets nodded at 0. 0.0005 speed or it something. It goes for like 10 hours. <laughs> I think it's like an hour, but There's because another it's one so that stretched goes for 10 out, hours. it's like, <laughs> ah, he does the same scream. Like when you watch it, you'll notice, but he do, Mike Wazowski does the same scream every time he screams like, ah. <laughs> it sounds like that. Anyway, tonight I'm probably going to watch. Scream. Yeah, exactly. Hey, what are you going to watch tonight? tonight? I'm tossing up between Coco, which is not a classic, but it's like, you know, still really good. Yeah, and sure. um, what was the other one? Um, up. Wally. Yeah, no, Wally. Wally was the okay. one. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Wally? It's boring. <laughs> But I want to watch it again because the last because I watched it heaps as a kid and I loved yeah. it. And I tried to watch it like three or four years ago and I just was just like, oh. maybe it was just the mood I was in. But I was like, this is because okay. maybe because I watched it so many times as a kid that I know exactly what happens in that movie. I'm just oh, it's boring. Fair enough. But I'm gonna try it last, uh, not last night, t- tonight if I have time to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see I think what. I have the opposite opinion where I like the bits where it's boring and then I don't like when they try and force the whole. Earth is doomed thing. And they're like, because you know how the first half of that movie is on Earth? Earth. I love and those it's just, bits. It's almost a silent film of Those Wally. are my favorite bits. I hate the okay, bits yeah. on the ship. Yeah, that's what those I Those are so boring. Okay, so they're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. I those thought you meant bits, the other way around. No, no, those bits are so boring. I'm just like, I don't like the whole like humans like. And they end up saving the human race oh. with like a little plant. Is yeah, that what happens? but that's the thing. Like, I love all the bits with Wally in it and Eva. I love all yeah. those bits. Like the bits when they end up like making those two humans meet because they keep breaking stuff. Like, I just yeah. love all the robot bits, but the human bits are so boring. I guess it's yeah. good to teach kids about those you know, environmental things, issues happening in the world, kind yeah. of like how Zootopia does. But I need to watch yeah. Zootopia again. Yeah. yeah speaking so. of Monsters Inc. and John Goodman. I watched <laughs> Inside Lewin Davis again last night. Yeah. I don't think you've seen it, have you? No, I haven't. The Coen Brothers movie. No. Yeah. I, I think you love it. It's it's kind of depressing, but in like I that dark. I def- love depressing. It's in that dark comedy Coen Brothers yeah. kind of way. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got Oscar Isaac as a struggling folk singer in like the 50s oh, or 60s. This is on Netflix, isn't it? Yeah. Or Stan. It was one, one of one them. One of them. Yeah. Because that's how I watched it. I, I put it on last night because when you're feeling down, do you like to put on a depressing movie or a happy movie? Depends on what kind of down I'm feeling. Yeah. Usually when I'm feeling down, I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay in bed and yeah, cry. Yeah, but if you feel like putting <laughs> – put That was really <laughs> – <laughs> That just slipped out. I'm so sorry. Uh, but like if you feel like putting on a movie when you're feeling down. Oh, you- I definitely – my go-to movie that I actually put on when I'm feeling down is La La Land, strangely enough. Yeah. I, I like to put on a movie that's got depressing aspects but isn't like – But isn't a depressing movie. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like about life and like the sad yeah, things exactly. about life. You know what I mean? I find that more yeah. comforting than putting on a – a happy movie and then yeah. be like, oh, that was fun for a couple hours. And afterwards you're like, oh, no. You're back to your life. You're yeah. just like, shit. But if you put on a movie about like a depressed character or something, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's comforting. Yeah, exactly. Because someone else has got it worse. <laughs> exactly. That's why I love the end of La La Land and what, putting that on when I'm not feeling oh, yeah. like all oh, the way God. up because it just makes me like, it's like my trigger to get all the tears out of my body. It's yeah, just like. that ending. Yeah. Oh, my God. That lush like shot of them. Oh my god! Looking at each other, I'm gonna fucking yeah. cry. It's too real. It's too real. Oh my god. Anyways, Calm inside, down. inside the one day oh, was god. It was a great movie because this isn't. Uh, it's a bit not really a spoiler, but uh, there's not really a a character arc or a character like a journey really. Yeah. Like Oscar Isaac's character ends up in the same spot at the end as he does at the start. Like it's kind of depressing in that aspect. Because most of these musician stories, they start from like uh, they're down the dumps and then yeah. they get success, but by the end he's still you know, <laughs> struggling folk singer. Oh, and yeah, it's kind of depressing. But there's lots of fun little bits. Like there's a bit where he records a song with um, Justin Timberlake and Adam Driver. That's oh, really funny. yes, that sounds because amazing. He's like a pop this. producer, or like pop as it was back in the '60s or whatever. Yeah. So they Beatles. sing this like really surface level song about going to space. And Rocket it's called Man. Please Mr. Kennedy. 
Please, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> it's so catchy, though. I always get it stuck in my head when I watch the movie because, like, oh. please, Mr. Kennedy. Well, I don't want to go, don't shoot me into outer space. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the most dumb song ever. And Adam Driver does, like, the ad libs in the back, I guess you'd call it, where he goes, like, oh, oh, oh. Whoa. <laughs> like that's all he does in the whole song. It's so oh, I funny. need to see that so badly. Actually, I really want to watch that, that right one now. That one bit's really funny. I want to leave the podcast just to watch it. No. Um. <laughs> and there's this whole like uh, thing where Oscar Isaac ends up with uh, his friend's cat because accidentally like goes out of the apartment when he's leaving, but no one else is home. So he has to like carry it around with him <laughs> around the just place. Just carry a cat around with him. And I think apparently the... Coen Brothers added that in because they needed to add more conflict to the story. So, well, like an emotional, not emotional through line, but yeah. some sort of narrative through line. So they added this cat that he has to cart around with them and it gets lost and he gets to get a new, oh, find the cat I and all that, that stuff. It reminds me of another movie that I forget, but there you go. Yeah, it's really good. It's got a good cast. It's got Carrie Mulligan in it and John Goodman. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got any other movies to talk about? I've got a, f- a few more. Quickly go through them. Yeah. Okay. Vox Lux. I oh, yes, Vox Lux. bro. I've been wanting to watch that for a while. Keeping up with the theme of music-based movies, actually. We've had a few this week. All of them, actually. Are all Rocket, what? Music-based. Music based. That's Rocket cool. Rocket Man, Aladdin, Baby Driver. Yeah. Inside Lorne Davis. Yeah. Vox Lux. They're all music yeah, they or are. about musicians. That's Except for my Pixar ones, but that's fine. Yeah. They have songs in it. <laughs> yeah. But that's... The, the, Put that kid back where place. it came from, also help me, also help me, help me. Well, maybe if you watch different Disney movies, they would have been music best. Yeah, I mean... So. They're no, I'm watching Pixar movies. Okay, okay. Coco. Un poco loco. Vox Lux is really good. Yeah. I think you'd love it. Yeah. Because the way is it's it on called, Netflix? No, it's not. I had to. Okay. Oh, that's right. You had to iTunes. rent it. Yeah. But I was happy to because I I remember I really wanted to see it in theaters, but I missed it. So I was like, as it soon as I saw it in digital, played in theaters. Here. Yeah, it wasn't out for long at all. Mm. Natalie Portman's great in it. Mm. I can see this movie being very divisive because of the way it's told. Because it's not very conventional where it goes through a whole life of this character. Wait, do, it pretty much just shows two. Um, Parts because it's about this girl who becomes a famous singer after she survives a school shooting. Which the opening sequence is so like I almost had an anxiety attack. Oh my god! Like Jesus it's it's tastefully Christ. done where it's not overly gratuitous. Yeah, but you still get like that oh, like that gut feeling of like, yeah, that of oh. the, what the oh shit because I forgot feeling. like what the premise was. So when that opening scene happened, I was like oh, oh my god oh my god I wish you didn't tell me because when I went to when oh, I got to watch it, I, I'm hopefully to try forget and... by the time you watch it. Yeah, but hopefully. yeah, it's in all the synopsis too, so it's like I can't really talk about the movie without talking about how. Yeah, true. It true, starts, true. but yeah, so it starts out with that, and she gets uh, media coverage because she sings this like tribute song, like at a, I guess what like a what do you call, not like a funeral, but it's you know how they sometimes host those public events after a a wake. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. But she sings a song at one of those and it gets her famous. So like the first section of the movie or first half is her at like age 14 getting thrust into stardom and having to record songs and become a pop star. Oh, jeez. And then it skips 16 years. 16 and, years? Yeah, then the like last third of it is Natalie Portman. Ah. Uh, like, so and, most of it isn't even her. Oh, uh, it's I'd say like it's almost... Probably even split. Okay. Maybe it's like the second half and first half. Yeah. But yeah, Natalie Portman is really good in it. Like because they skip that 16 years, you still get a sense of what happened in between them through subtext and yeah, how the characters speak about stuff. And the way she acts is completely different to how the kid version of her acted, of course, because yeah. she's been had to go through all this shit. Yeah, for 16 years. Jesus, that would change you. I mean, yeah. we saw Rocket Man, so that's an example yeah. of that. And it's depressing. It's... Uh, great character stuff, uh, great performances, very interestingly shot. Mm. And it, it makes you feel tension and uh, it's very good. I, I don't know what else to say without spoiling it too much. Yeah. As I already have. Uh, a few more things I want to talk about. Catch 22 under your recommendation. Ooh, 
Sweet Hot Doggy. I love that show. Yeah. That wasn't music based, but no. it had a lot of swing and jazz in it. Yeah. Which is cool. Mm. I love a swing and jazz soundtrack. Me too. There was a song that was stuck in my head from it the other day. Which one? Yesterday. Oh, how did it go? I don't want those was to be too the one much that's dead like, air. Um, was it the one that was like um, about flying? Yeah. Um, I'm and pretty it's sure. Like, no, I've got another song stuck in my head. No, it's about. It'll come to me later and I'll just randomly sing it. Yeah, probably. yeah. But yeah. yeah, it was a good little mini series. Not the best thing I've ever seen, of course, but it was a nice solid little story focused on a character yeah. who claims yo, to be the yo. only sane person. He <laughs> claims to, yeah. Yeah. And he's trying to get out of uh, doing these missions, but, but they, the Catch-22, of course. Yeah, and they keep upping the missions and every time I was like, no, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every Just time it's so leave. stressful. It's like I feel so bad for him. But then in, in inherently from him trying to get out of – war he causes the casualties of all his friends yeah inadvertently exactly. it's like really like yeah man it's a good show yeah. good book if you if you're gonna do one or the other read the book but the show is still fucking good i love it i'm sorry i'm a huge fan of it i'm just gonna say right now <laughs> good comedy too yeah like dark comedy yeah but it was really well done like it wasn't confusing whether it was meant to be oh am i meant to be laughing at this or like there are bits where you're horrified and there's bits where you're like Okay, this is kind of funny in a yeah. really weird way. <laughs> yeah, in a really like way that makes me like go, oh, that shouldn't be funny. Yeah, and there's lots of little situational stuff like major, 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 major. Yeah, major, 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 major. Because his he was named major, 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 first name but name, last name. Yeah. As a gag from uh his dad. His dad, yeah. He signed the birth papers. But then he gets promoted to major because oh. it's too confusing if he's a sergeant <laughs> named Major, Major, Major. <laughs> I thought that was amusing. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Oh, uh, I won't talk about it too much because he probably said a lot of stuff last week. Yeah. That I forgot. Uh, two other things. A few other things, sorry. This is going to be a long segment. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Uh, what time are we at? That's all right because we it, – it's yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's fine. I watched oh, – last week we watched Mamma Mia after we recorded the podcast because I hadn't seen Mama, it before. Oh, I love Mamma Mia. Yeah. Fucking hell. It was entertaining. I liked it. I don't want to – I'll skip over that because I don't have a lot to say other than ABBA songs are cool, uh, the actors are good, and the water looked really blue and I wanted to swim in it. Yeah. I was cheated by you since I told you no way. Uh, then the last two things I watched kind of connected, but not really. Uh, the unauthorized Bash Brothers experience, which is by the Lonely Island on Netflix. Yeah. And Lonely Island and Mike Diva, who does a lot of YouTube VFX stuff. But yeah, that was really good. It was a visual album. I, I think need to see it, it still. Yeah. It's only half an hour long, which I was surprised by, but also I was like, oh, it makes sense because it's just a string of music videos interconnected. Yeah. Kind of like Beyonce's Lemonade, but. More funny and satirical. Unless. Because it's based off these real guys, the Bash Brothers, who are baseball players. But, yeah, it's just taking the piss and it's really funny. And if you like Lonely Island, you'll probably get a kick out of it. And if you like Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping or whatever it was called. Yeah, that same kind of humor. Nice. I used to love, like, I was obsessed with the Lonely Island back in, like, yeah. um, what's it called? What is that thing that you could pirate music off back in the day? LimeWire? LimeWire, yeah. Okay. Back in the LimeWire days. Fucking obsessed, yeah. Yeah. I I'd definitely recommend Pop Star as well because I thought that was really funny. Good songs on that. Straighten up and fly right. Yes, that's the one. Straighten oh up and stay late. Straighten up and fly right. Cool down, baby. Don't you blow your top. That one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I like how you sang it randomly instead of me. I thought I was going to remember it. <laughs> no, because it's also from something else. Yeah, it is because yeah. I was like, I've I've heard this somewhere, yeah. but I don't know where. Exactly. No, it's definitely from something else. It's such a good song. It's Nat King Cole, so of course it's good. Anyway. Yeah. And Bob ba, ba, Americano. <laughs> Bob ba, ba, Americano, but the original version. Yeah. <laughs> and last, last thing I'll talk about is a little comedy series called I Think You Should Leave on Netflix by Tim Robinson. It's just, if you want to watch just a bunch of funny sketches on Netflix, I definitely recommend it. Hmm. It's that kind of absurd comedy you'd find on 
like classic YouTube where it's yeah. all exaggerated and heightened. Smosh era in. YouTube. Oh, that's better than Smosh. Yeah. I would wouldn't be. call it Smosh level. I mean humor. Smosh era. Yeah, yeah. Like back when, yeah. It's like with Smosh for funny, I guess. If, yeah, if Smosh wasn't made for like two yeah. year olds. But no, the main guy, Tim Robinson, he's in like most of the sketches. I, I hadn't seen him in anything before, but he was so funny. Uh, I'm trying to think Ooh. of a sketch I can bring up. I, I, I can kind of spoil the opening sketch of the first episode where it's like he's going for a job interview. And then like when he's leaving, he's like, okay, I'll be seeing you around. And he goes to open the door, but it's, he's like pulling it. And it's like, uh, it's, it's a push door. And he's like, no, I was here yesterday. It's pull. And he's like, keep trying to pull it. <laughs> and then the guy's like, I'm pretty sure it's push. He's like, no, I was here yesterday. It's pull. And he like keeps pulling it until like the, the door starts like cracking and like the nails start coming off. And he's like, <laughs> and it's really drawn out and it keeps cutting back bef- between them. And they're like, <laughs> and he breaks the door down. He's like, I told you it was Paul. And then he walks out. <laughs> it's all stuff like that. It's very funny. That's so cute. Okay. That concludes the segment finally. <laughs> Fucking hell. That took a while. Sorry, everyone. It's probably not much longer than it was last week. Honestly, but yeah. it always feels longer to us for some reason. Yeah. So, nice. yeah. That, oh, my God. That brings us to a segment we like to call Spidey Recap of the Week. It's the comics that we read week to week. Two of them. I did one. Sammy did the other one. Here it is. Oh, who's going first? Uh, I can go first. Yeah, I guess. You go even first. though I just spoke for ages, but it's fine. No, it's good. Unless you have yours up already, because I'll. No, I don't. One. Straighten I up also and barely fly read mine. right. Like I read it, but like. Okay. Straighten up and fly right. Well, I read mine this morning, so I think Cold I can remember it. If this is gonna load, I swear the Marvel time. Unlimited app. Huh. I think the Marvel Unlimited app just plays up sometimes. It does. Sometimes it doesn't matter it how good your internet is. It just load pages for no good reason. Yep. It's like, great, cool. I love that. Love that for you. Yeah, so as the page loads, is there anything to talk about? Um, Mac farted again. So it was Mac. Mac is the dog. There you go. That lives under the Now the, the listeners table. know. Yes. He's a good boy. Otherwise, people might think you had a weird accent and said Mike farted. Oh, it's Mac like, farted. <laughs> Mac <Mike> farted. <laughs> <laughs> not that they care. It's an audio medium. Yeah, it's exactly. not a smelloscope. Yeah. Okay, so this Straight issue. Up and fly this and is <laughs> This is Amazing Spider-Man Annual number four. I think it's number four. Yeah, number four. And it's called The Parents of Peter Parker. So that's probably got you like. His parents. That jiggles my timbers. That no. reminds me of those amazing Spider Man movies. Shivers. That shivers my shivers timbers. Your timbers. Yeah, jiggles. Oh, oh yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of fucking wobbly foundations you got here. <laughs> okay, so it opens, cold open. We don't know where Spider Man is. He's just running from some crooks. They're throwing knives at him, they're shooting at him. And all we know is that he's in a foreign country. And he's like, how did I get wound up into this situation? And he's tackling them. Some dude throws a carton of watermelons at him. And he's like, whoa, Bro, that's watermelons. so rude, as if you would. Then he kind of just drops casually. He's like, hmm, uh, I didn't come all the way to Algeria for nothing. Uh, I've got to figure out where these crooks are coming from. So he's in Algeria. Okay, just Algeria. Yeah. Just- I don't know why. And at this point, I was like, I'm really confused. Because usually Stanley has all this exposition explaining what happened? Like this feels like a two-parter. Yeah. But it makes sense soon because he kind of backtracks. All right. He does a okay. Deadpool and he's like, let's tell you how I got into the <laughs> he situation. Does a Deadpool. Hey, you're so, probably wondering how I got uh, he, here. He's running on a roof and some guy shoots at him and the bullet whizzes past his head, but like <laughs> caused him to f- slip and fall into a water and knock his head. <gasps> and uh, he manages to get out of the water, but he's all like, oh, I'm frazzled. So... Uh, it says, then as he slowly sinks into a helpless coma, his mind goes Come drifting on. back, back into the now, vanished past. So we go back into the past and Peter is uh, li- helping Aunt May lift a crate down into the basement. Classic Peter. Yeah, but he's doing it all himself because he's like, I'm a strong boy. And it's this big metal crate. It's locked very well. And uh, when he grabs it to push it down the stairs... He grabs it too hard and it bends the top of it open. 
and <laughs> casually. Yeah. How do you act? I mean, like he's Spider Man. It's like the Amazing Spider Man where he breaks his sink. Yeah. <laughs> and the doorknob. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if someone was strong and they pulled on a doorknob, it wouldn't just like pop the doorknob off. It would like break. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had really dodgy doorknobs. Just like how you would throw a football at a pole and it just bends. Yeah, the, just the, like the football would pop. Yeah. Anyway, but, continue. Yeah, all these letters fall out and these photos. And they're like, what's this? This newspaper, that that photo of, what, of that man's face. He looks like me, but I, I don't remember that photo. And he says, the name Richard Parker. No wonder Richard he looks like Parker. me. Richard Barker. I had his phone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It's going around. Full circle. <laughs> it's not quite a circle. <laughs> it's more like a a line, a dot to dot. A dot to dot. That's how you know Remember I'm not. Remember dot to dots? I never got the appeal oh of those. Oh, my God, dot to dots. Holy shit, I forgot those existed. <laughs> <laughs> Remember paint by numbers? Yeah, I do. That's one thing I know still exists. Okay. But dot to dots. I never got the appeal of those because... I think it's just because I was a kid that's like, I want to do it all myself. So it's like, I don't want to paint someone else's drawing. Well, some of us didn't know how to draw mine. I liked some coloring of us books. Shit. I liked coloring books. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't like paint by numbers because there's numbers on it. It's like, yeah, yeah exactly. On aesthetic. You should release your old Spidey drawings on the podcast media page. Yeah, if people care. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Thomas. Thomas, do you care? Do you want to see them? It's pretty funny. Sure. All right. It'll be our new logo art. <laughs> That's the photo cute. of Peter Parker where he's got a really long arm. <laughs> yeah, and he's like side profile walking. <laughs> he's like got a bent arm. I yeah. love that one so much. But anyways, anyways, Peter <laughs> finds his photo and he's like, Sorry. his name is Richard Parker. He's got to be my father. But the newspaper clipping, it can't be true, can it? And the newspaper says, the Parker... Uh, Sorry. Okay, it's just it's the Parker. Oh, that's I read the wrong bit. That's the headline. <laughs> Maybe no. no it says matter Richard how Parker. much Thomas criticizes us, we'll still be like this. Hey, <laughs> sorry, Thomas. <laughs> Make fun of us all you want. Oh, it says Richard Parker and wife killed in a plane crash in Algeria. Bro, there you go. So where is Algeria? Is it Africa? Yeah, it's like northern Africa, yeah. I think. And it says Parker Prime suspect in spy plot against the United States. Against? Yeah, so he's like, fucking all my commies. life I've wondered who my parents are. But now I find out and they were traitors. Calmies. Then this is why the Aunt May has kept this from me all these years. So he goes, he goes oh sprinting up the stairs. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally took seven steps in one step. That's crazy, dude. And he's like, who I've got to that? know more. I've got to know what happened. And he goes up to Aunt May and he's like, <laughs> Aunt May, this clipping fell out of the trunk. Uh, you never told me about this. I have to know the reason why. And Aunt May's like, Peter, I'm so sorry. Your Uncle Ben and I tried so hard to keep it from you. There's nothing that anyone could do. So we didn't want to hurt you. And Peter's like, how, how could my own, own <laughs> what's that yeah. accent? How could my own parents? <laughs> <laughs> You're going back to banner mode. I mean, oh, what? <laughs> back, what do you mean back to banner? No, never mind. I mean, you just miss him so much. You're emulating his accent. Maybe I'm being possessed. <laughs> By Eric Banner. He says, uh, how could my own parents, Uncle Ben's <laughs> own brother, actually be traitors to their own country? How? And I'm always like, at first, we couldn't believe it either. Such dreadful news. An awful shock. Almost killed your Uncle Ben. Okay, that's a bit poor taste, Aunt May. <laughs> <laughs> that is really in poor taste. <laughs> Peter should be like, uh, what do you mean almost killed him? <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot. <laughs> Uncle Ben died. <laughs> like, that's so sad. But anyways, uh, May's Aunt, Aunt May's like, probably I should have told you because, you know, you had the right to know, but you were so frail and young and innocent. You know, like she always she says. still calls him frail. If no, anyone says frail, you, you were frail. I mean, she still calls him frail. Yeah. Maybe oh this... no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just... Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen his face. <laughs> you know the pokey, the Pokemon meme. Oh Pikachu. yeah, the Wow Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> Aunt May's like, even though everyone said he was a traitor, I couldn't, could never really believe it. In my heart, I still can't believe it. Not about him or your mother. Let me see a flashback of Richard Parker and Mary Parker with 
baby Peter. This is like when they leave. So picture like the start of Amazing Spider-Man. Except Richard Parker and this looks exactly like Peter Parker. Literally. And his wife looks a lot like Betty Brandt. <laughs> which makes Freud. me think maybe this artist can only draw like three faces, but also maybe they're trying to do something with that, you know? Yeah. I mean, the like, Richard Parker one makes sense because everyone's like, you look so much like your father. They don't say that. They the say absence that in the movie. of his mother tried to find a woman who looked like her. Isn't that a thing where yeah. people like... It is. Yeah. Men find a woman who looks that, like, that's like, like their, their mom. mom. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. But it yeah. also kind of makes sense. I guess. In I a mean, weird way. If you had a good mom. I have a good mom and I don't try to find someone like my mom. So. <laughs> I also don't like girls particularly. I mean, I mean, I would, but you know, I've got a boyfriend. So, okay, okay why am I talking about this <laughs> podcast? Save it for the other podcast. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I regret so, that statement. <laughs> Do you? No. I see. I almost said Uncle Ben. We see Richard and Mary going on a plane, and then it cuts to. Uh, this Uncle- literally is the Amazing Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, then Uncle Ben and Aunt May reading the paper, and. It's- they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know this about them. It's like we're reading about strangers and now they're dead. So then we see baby Peter, like, with little uh, letter blocks, like, playing. You know you know how babies do. Yeah. They play around. He's spelling I-dobs. And he spells I-dobs, which is like, okay. <laughs> weird Hang foreshadowing on. all the way from the fucking 70s. Like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I-dobs read this issue and that's where he got the name from. I Dubs was born the same year this issue was released. Question the 60s. mark. Sixties. <laughs> I Dubs anyway, is old. Peter. <laughs> Peter's like, like eh, I'm a little baby. I don't know better. And then Uncle Ben's like, "There's only one thing we can do, mate. We have to raise him like our own boy." Oh, that's so sweet. And then Peter's like, "That can't be all to the story. There must be more. Tell me, Aunt May. Did you see any proof that he was really a traitor?" And Aunt May's like, "That's all I know, dear." And Peter's like, what about the plane crash that killed them? What, what's the deal with that? And I'm like, oh, yes, the plane crash. There was oh, something. yes, by the way. <laughs> Your uncle and I wrote to the man in Algeria who had identified the bodies asking for more information. And Peter's like, what did he say? And she's like, nothing, Peter. Oh, Nothing we wrote. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you did half your voice and half on my voice. <laughs> That was so funny. <laughs> oh my <Hate> god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like when you're a kid and you're making faces and your teacher says, if you keep making those faces and when the wind blows, you're going to be stuck making that face. <laughs> Did that happen? I don't remember hearing that ever. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I had weird teachers. I had a racist teacher in primary school. So. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Save it for the other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she says, nothing, Peter. Then we wrote letter after letter. The result was always the same. We never received an answer. So Peter's like, okay, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So he goes and mopes outside, walking down a pathway, because that's what he does. Style. And, you know, he he just reiterates all the things we just saw. He's like, eh, perhaps it would have been better if I'd never known. But how can I just put it aside now? And yet, why can't I accept the newspaper report? Why can't I accept Aunt May's story? Every fiber of my being is shouting, no, no, it can't be true. It isn't true. Calm down, white boy. (laughs) How can I ever know a peaceful day, an untroubled minute until I've proven myself? (laughs) Slow down, Billy Joe Armstrong. I know. What's going on here? Yeah. And he gets to his apartment and he's still, he can't sleep because all he sees in his head is the words treason, treason, and his parents' faces. Oh my God, that's. Okay, that's an issue. And he's like, it's the most horrible thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, ever. Which is like, okay, that's debatable. Yeah, I mean, like, you nearly died many times. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's like, makes him reevaluate his whole past and upbringing, you know. He's like, everything I knew to be true is wrong. Oh, kind of like that Andrew yes. Garfield movie. But it's like. Right, it rattles him so much they made two movies about it. I know, but it's like, <laughs> you barely even knew your parents. What does it matter? And I would do it for you, do. for mm. you. Best scene in a Spider-Man movie, I'd say. No, I like the skateboarding scene set to Coldplay. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> That's real. That's not just something I said. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> it sounds like some stupid shit that we'd say. There's a skateboard montage set to Coldplay in that movie. Yeah. And in the second one, there's him making a mind map on his wall with electrical tape set to some Phil Phillips song. Whoever that is. 
Yeah. But anyways, uh, Peter's like, I have to do something about it. I can't stand my room. I can't just sit here and brood. I have to do something, anything, or I'll go mad. Oh, does he go to Algeria? What do you know? He goes to Algeria. Because <laughs> <laughs> we already know that. We saw it at the start. But uh, how does he get there? That's the question. We need to know because Peter, he doesn't have money for plane tickets. He's got responsibilities. Responsibility. And he needs to get there quick and snappy so no one knows he's gone because that would raise suspicion if Peter Parker goes to Algeria and suddenly Spider-Man's there too. Yeah. Yeah, a bit bit sus, I'd say. A bit Spider-Man far from home, but, you know. Yeah, before he goes to Algeria, actually, he's like, I need to find some action. I need to get my mind off this. And he sees a guy who he thinks is robbing a bank. And he starts beating him up, well, oh, almost geez. starts beating him up. But the guy's like, hey, what are you doing, you idiot? That's why he's like, why are you robbing this bank? And he's like, I'm not robbing the bank. I work here, you fool. I'm shutting <laughs> the store down. Oh, God. And Peter's like, wow, he, he, he must mean it. He's really angry. <laughs> <laughs> he must mean it because he's really angry. Yeah. And he's like, why aren't you catching real criminals instead of innocent storekeepers like me? Even if I knew who you are behind that mask, I'd sue you. You hot-headed menace. And Spider-Man's like, okay, okay, keep your shirt on. Nobody's perfect, mate. And he just runs away. <laughs> just runs away from the situation. Sounds like my life. Then we see Peter trying to sleep again. He's still like, he's yelling into into the night pretty much. He's like, he needs to punch I've got a hole to, in his wall. He should, but he, he went to the roof now. Yeah. He's like, I've got to find out for myself. I've got to go to Algeria. There must be someone who remembers, someone who has involvement with my parents who can tell me the truth. And where really wherever he is, man. I've got to find him. Just go to Algeria and just ask around. Pretty much, that's pretty much what he does. <laughs> oh my god! So he, he goes whole ass country. Okay, it's summer vacation now, but Peter Parker can't begin to scape, scrape up the plane fare. So this is what I was talking about before. Okay. So yeah. he's like, uh, "I've got to contact the right people." So where does he go to? Have a guess. Um, Harry Osborn or Norman Osborn? No, think bigger. Think bigger, Kingpin. <laughs> no, not physically. <laughs> not physically. Okay. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Wealthier. Why do you <laughs> hey, J. Jonah Jameson, could I have a plane ticket to Algeria? Why? Why? Uh, it's just Spider-Man's going to be there. I want to take <laughs> photos. I want to take photos. I know that Spider-Man is going to be there. <laughs> no, no. He goes to the Fantastic Four, his mates. Oh, my God, of course. Because they have science stuff. They would have been like the and last he buzzes people, in, I guessed. And, uh... Yeah, you know, they let him in, and the thing's like, stand aside, you... Wait, no, that's not what he says. Uh, Peter says, stand aside, you grinning gargoyle. Don't you recognize someone in the same line of work? And the thing's like, I don't know you ain't Dr. Doom in disguise. Okay. And Reed Richards is like, calm down, Ben. Let's just, let's just hear him out. It's probably fine. And then Spider-Man's like, all right, I'll get right to the point. I need a lift to Algeria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get straight to the point. I need a lift. He's like, <laughs> I know you, you guys have got some sort of sky ships, swinging sky ships around here. Hey, can I kind of lift? And Johnny's like, oh, it must be important. Old Webhead's not the type to ask for favors, which I don't think that's quite true either. Because no. he's gone to the Fantastic Four a couple of times already. I mean, the first like, time he ever did was, can I have a job? Like, Yeah, he's like, can you guys hire me and pay me? And then yeah. when they said no, they, he beat them up. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> he doesn't have the best rapport with yeah, the Fantastic Four. I guess that was years Four. ago at this point. So Johnny's like, okay. Yeah. He's redeemed himself since then. And Reed Richards is like, you might be in luck, my friend. Uh, I was just asked to check out a new two-man gyro cruiser developed by Tony Stark's company. It's supposed to have an 8,000-mile nonstop range. How does that grab you? And Peter's like, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here? Yeah, so then they go into uh, this this two-man flying vehicle. I forget what it's called already. Stark but uh, plane, Reed Richards is like, plane. this ship was designed to be shields answer to flying saucers. So just hold tight, Master Man. Flying saucers. That's such a yeah. 60s, like. Yeah, but they've been spotted recently. I was UFO. saying this before. Yeah. yeah. But they look like actual, like, spinning tops. Whoa, weird. Which is weird. Oh, I'm scared now. Yeah. Fuck. I'll have to find this article later. God, but there's, like, all this, scary. like, evidence backing it up. And I was like, hmm. I kind of want to believe this just because it's interesting. Yeah. It's more interesting than our, whatever else is happening in the world yeah, right now. Exactly. But anyways, at, outside of real world stuff, let's get back into Spider-Man. And uh, he gets to Algeria real quick because of this speedy vehicle. 
And uh, he makes a little web parachute for himself, which I haven't seen him do that in a while. You know, he makes a web parachute. Yeah. Like Even in the early issues. doesn't seem logical, but whatever. Sure. The webs can do whatever Stanley wants them to do. Is... At any given moment, yeah. Yeah. I guess they did that in Homecoming where they gave him all those different web gizmos. Yeah. Where he's got like bomb web. Uh, spitty, spitty, I don't know, I can't think of the spitty, rest of them. Spitty, spitty web. Spitty, spitty web. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he, he lands and uh, he's like, all right. The man Aunt May said she wrote to in Algeria, the one who's supposed to have identified my parents' bodies, she said he ran a restaurant in the Caspar. I've tried most of them already. That one's the only place left. Casper so the friendly ghost. Rock the Casper. No, it's Casper. A R. Casper. Okay, A. Just an A. A H. Oh, A H. You know, like Rock the Casper. No. You know I that don't. song? No. Oh, classic eighties bop, mate. Mate. So Spidey sneaks into this restaurant. And they're just like about wrapping up, and uh, Spider Man's like, "Hold it, Mister! You've still got a live one in the joint." <laughs> And this dude turns around and he's like, by the beard of the prophet, a costumed being clinging to the wall like a human insect. <laughs> Who speaks like that? Uh, Algerians. Algerians, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Spider-Man's like, like a fun-loving spider to be exact. I'm glad you speak English. It'll save us both a lot of time. Because I, when I was reading this, I was thinking like, he speaks English. That's Yeah, that's, that's unlikely, yeah. But anyways, uh, Spider-Man starts questioning him, being like, now, I want you to think back, back to the early days after World War II. And when I was reading this, it, it took me off guard for a second. I was like, oh, yeah, Peter Parker would have been born around World War II. I was about, yeah, I was about to say, excuse me, but I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I was like, how old is he? And I was <laughs> yeah. like, no, this is the 60s, so, yeah, yeah it makes sense. Mm. Wow, Peter Parker, because it's the same continuity. Do you reckon if Peter Parker dies, well, he has died. He has died, I'm yeah. curious to see what's written on his tombstone. In Oh, in... Into the spot like, of it? Not into the spot, like the modern comics when oh, the he modern dies. Comics. But like, okay. I think they just push it up. Yeah, because I know an Ultimate, is it Ultimate Comics? Yeah, but Ultimate Comics ran for about the same time yeah. that he aged. Yeah. So it made sense. Yeah, exactly. Mm, I'm curious I don't know. to know. Yeah. Yeah, because it'd be funny if you see his tombstone, it's like 1948. Yeah, like, it's what? like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? And Aunt May somehow still alive? Oh, no, didn't she? Has she died now? I know that, like, she's, like. like <laughs> oh, we forgot about that gag for so long. Well, it was, it's new season. Yeah. But, nah. No. I mean, what gag? It was bleeped out. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, isn't Aunt May supposed to be dead or actually dying? Like in the no, current... No one's ever really gone, as they say in Star Wars <laughs> Episode Nine. No one's ever really gone. Or some people forget. Yeah, they also but say that. But not us. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> that was wait, two different quotes. Some people quotes. move on, sorry. <laughs> but not us. Some people forget. Yeah. But not us. But not us. But not us. But not us. Anyway, Spider-Man's still questioning this guy who owns the restaurant. And, uh... Yeah, Spidey's like, so do you know this? these Americans that died in a plane crash? Apparently the owner of the restaurant identified the bodies. And he's like, I knew them. They dined here many times. Uh, everyone knew he was a spy working for a master of intrigue. All right. Whose headquarters were in this very city. And Spider-Man's like, yeah, that's what I want. The one he worked for. Who was he? Talk. He's like, I can't give you his name, but I know the address very well. Perhaps it is there you can find what you seek. And Spider-Man's like, the address then, uh, let me have it. So then uh, I forgot to mention when he broke into this restaurant, there was another guy with him that kind of left before this guy got interrogated. So now we see this this second guy running away and he's like, the master must be warned. There's a there's a dude here. There's a Spider-Man. Oh, okay. But he webs up the restaurant owner because he's like, hey, I want to get out of here before you guys, before you can contact uh, the people to know. authorities. Here. But then um, Spider-Man didn't know there was the second guy that's already escaped and let people know. Bro. And uh, this brings us right back to the opening few pages of the comic where he's running from these guys and he falls off the roof and he knocks his head. Boink. 
Boink. Yep, and he's like, okay, let's see where I was heading. Oh, yes, the address. I got it from the restaurant owner. I was ambushed by those assorted thugs before I could reach there. I must be, um, means I must be on the right track. They jumped me because someone tipped them off. So, yep, then he uh, finds the place. And as Spider-Man does, he rips the door open and knocks out a guy standing out front because he wants answers. He wants answers. He doesn't care about... Um, Public you know, liability. Yeah, that that's the word I couldn't think of. <laughs> but he gets inside and he's like, well, here I am inside. <laughs> <laughs> here I am inside. I'm a father. Look at me go. Well, this this excess dialogue is, that's still in these comics is like, well, I'm inside now. <laughs> yeah, like as if we're, if we can read that he's inside, <laughs> we should also be able to see that. Like, why are you trying to tell us twice? Uh, I don't know. But oh fuck! That smells really bad, dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> Should we release this podcast in four D? <laughs> yeah. Like Spy Kids. Smell a vision. Yeah, the, the scratch and sniff card. Oh my god, that smells so bad. I can't smell it from over here. So. Oh my god, it's like the worst. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally getting goosebumps from that smell. Like, I get those goosebumps every, every time. time. I hear that. I smell that fart. <laughs> <laughs> What's this episode becoming? <laughs> I'm just like Peter Parker at the end of all these comics. It's like, what is this becoming? <laughs> yeah. Where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? My life What have sucks. I learned? Yeah. Oh, the hell. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Oh, well, at least I'm Spider-Man. So that's cool. <laughs> Literally at the end of every single issue. <laughs> Maybe not this one. Maybe not this one. Maybe not mm-hmm. my one either. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, once he gets inside... Uh, he's like, is this still a secret headquarters of a spy, a spy ring? I almost said spy king. Spy king. Perhaps I can find some sort of records or files somewhere. I'll cover every inch of the place. And then uh, he finds a secret button underneath a desk, like all these spy movies and characters usually have. You know how, he, like, behind the desk there's like a button. Yeah, like, yeah. There's like a secret button. And yeah. He finds that secret button and opens these files. Bruh. He's filing cabinets and he's sorting through them. And he's like, oh, I'm almost sorry I started this. If I do learn that my dad was an enemy agent, I have to live with that the rest of my life. Bruh. And he finds his, his dad's name. And he's like, oh, I found what I'm looking for, what I prayed I wouldn't find. Here in the membership file, some sort of <coughs> identification card. And I found it in a folder labeled Richard Parker. Bruh. And it says on the back of it, his name... <laughs> <laughs> has a signature. It's though it's true. It was always true. My own father was a traitor to his country. He was in the employ of an enemy spy organization. So he's like really bummed out about this. It's but true. He because, went all the way to Algeria just to find out what he already knows. But. Oh, but, never mind. Okay. But, while he was so <laughs> wrapped up in this, um, his little bubble here getting shook once again that his father betrayed him. Someone snuck up behind him. <gasps> it like, is. Spider Man says, can't be. Someone has entered the room. <laughs> <laughs> someone has entered the room. My spider sense was tingling, but I didn't even notice. So it's like, if, if you didn't notice, how do you know your spider sense is tingling? Yeah, exactly. It should be like, you know, oh, if, a, oh, if a tree falls in the middle of nowhere, does it make a sound? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. It doesn't it does. if no one hears it. But it still makes a sound. Yeah, but if because sound waves only are translated to sound when there's ears there to perceive them as such. Otherwise, they're just like leave pressure a waves. There. They're just pressure waves. But if you leave like a little, yeah, then if you leave a microphone, then yes, it did make a sound. Yeah, no one's around. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Okay, fine. You win that one. <laughs> Jesus. I try to like actually go in that with a, some scientific actual like. <laughs> no, I get what the saying means, but yeah. like, I don't care. Okay, fine. But anyways. <laughs> Apparently this, this I ruined do. the suspense of what I was trying to say here. Yeah. But I guess I'd better turn around. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And he says, and you. I want to take a guess who this is. Richard Parker. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Ben but, Parker. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> Have I ever told you about, or showed you that deleted scene from Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yeah, where his dad is His dad is pops up at Gwen's g- gravestone. Oh my God, what the fuck? He's visiting Gwen's grave and then his father pops up behind <laughs> and is like, hey, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. It's dumb, but it's also very sad. <laughs> it's dumb, but it's also... Andrew Garfield acts his ass off for the stupid scene. Oh, that never even got put in the fucking movie. I'm going to look that up right yeah. now. No, watch it later. No, look I'll watch it, it then, later, but I'm yeah. looking it up now. Fucking, did I say I'd watch it now? Hmm. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm drawing out this one panel so long. <laughs> <laughs> who did, who for is For those it? of you who have zoned out, Spider-Man says, someone has entered the room. My spider sense was tingling, but I didn't even notice. Guess I'd better turn around and... You and it's Red Skull. Oh, that was the most <laughs> anticlimactic shit of my fucking life. It's Red Skull. Whenever you think Red Skull is no longer in continuity, he pops up again. Oh my god, <laughs> why? He says, Well, 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 the Spider Man himself wishes to join Red Skull's international ring of master spies and saboteurs. No one can understand what you're saying. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> If I was Spider-Man, I would have punched him in the face by then. I would have been just like, fuck off. Well, okay, essentially Red Skull's like, Spider-Man, you've come to join me, have you? That's my paraphrasing of it. And Spider-Man's there like, you go. I've heard about you, read about you ever since I can remember. And Red Skull's like, and I would have thought that you would be far more formidable looking yourself, Spider-Man. Compared to my accured arch enemy, Captain America, you're nothing more than a spinely scarecrow. Wow, what a dickhead. And Red Skull, he's got he's got a robe on. He's got like his nightgown on, a scarf. He's looking real snug. And he's got like a, he's got a cigarette, you know. You can have a look. You mean a pipe? Oh, a yeah, pipe. he's got a cigarette. He's got a cigarette with Whoa, this. Oh, dude, he looks fucking like bougie filter. as fuck, except his face is fucking well, disgusting. He's Red Skull. Come on, he's Hugo weaving. <laughs> 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 Anyway. For those of you who wondered what just happened, Sammy did a backflip. Yeah, I just did a backflip, guys, in case you wanted to know. Yeah, essentially Spider-Man and Red Skull getting into an argument. And, uh, yeah, so Red Skull gets this big dude to come in and fight Spider-Man because he needs to have a bit of action in there. There's a big dude that kind of looks like Kingpin, but he's more like he's more jacked than, than like sumo jacked, you mm. know. And he's got an open chest vest. He's got an open chest? Ew. Well, maybe later, actually. <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see what I mean later. Um, Spider-Man gets thrown into a wall. Uh, he webs up this dude. And Red Skull's like, ah, oh, you need more than webs to catch this guy, Spider-Man. He's pretty buff. Spider-Man's like, no, I won't. I just need <laughs> to stall him for a little bit so I could sock him in the face. So he All knocks right. he knocks out this buff guy. Right. And Red Skull's like, what? Only a handful of living men could have beaten him so easily. Spider-Man is far more powerful than I would have guessed. Therefore, I'll have to result, result? resort sorry, <laughs> to other measures. Result. So Red Skull kind of buggers off. And then Spider-Man, uh, he's got a bit of a rip on his shoulder, which will come into play later. Okay. And uh, Oh, in his shirt? On his, no, on his uh, costume. Oh, okay. And uh, he's like, this is the most disappointing trip I've ever taken. <laughs> it's almost far from home vibes, you know. Yeah. He's in this other country doing spy shenanigans. As if we know what far from home is yet, but, you know, just on a completely superficial level, it's Spider-Man in another country investigating stuff. But, yeah, Spider-Man, he's like, I've come all this way hoping to find proof of my father's innocence instead of alliance. That he was evil, blah, blah, blah. We already know all this stuff. Yeah, pretty much. But he's like, anybody connected with the Red Skull has to be traitorous. So he's still going on about it, so uh, skip this page. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, then we see the big dude wakes up. The big dude. Yeah, and then Red Skull's like, you hulking brainless brute, you let one of the masked, oh, you let one masked misfit half your size defeat you. Then he slaps him in the face. <laughs> Red Skull slaps the big guy, I mean. Okay, he just bitch slaps him, sure. And then uh, Red Skull is like, I'll determine your punishment later. And he has this this guy with a, a pirate uh, eye patch on. Because for some reason all the like ethnic villains in 
the Spider-Man comics have an eye patch. Yeah. And like a stripy of shirt. Of course. That's the only way to know if they're ethnic or not. It reminds me of that clip of the 60s cartoon <clears throat> where he fires that like Indian guy and it's really racist. He like plays a flute and like a snake comes out and <laughs> attacks him. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. This, this guy with the eye patch finds the piece of the costume that ripped off his shoulder and Red Skull's like, good, we can use that. And at this point I'm like, how are they going to use a piece of ripped fabric from his costume to find Spider-Man? Yeah, and, that makes no sense. Unless you're a dog. The explanation still makes no sense because um, there's a device that apparently you just put something in it and it can sense where the person is. That's just a bloodhound. <laughs> it's a- That's literally what a dog does. You just give it the piece of fabric, it sniffs. They could have done that, but they had to put science in it. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so fine, sure. He goes to this guy called the finisher. <laughs> The Dude. finisher. It's like the Punisher except discount. Yeah, he finishes stuff, right? He's good in bed. Um, so he, <coughs> Red Skull goes up to him and the finisher's like, uh, there's one single thing I need. And Red Skull's like, yeah, I know that. Here's a piece of material that was worn by your intended victim. And finishes like, say no more. This is all I require say no more, fam. To, to, to finish the life of who wore it. This finisher... Has never failed me yet, Red Skull says. Mm-hmm. So Finisher puts the piece of fabric in the science device. They track Spider Man. Spider's got a spider signal. Uh, is it called Spider Sense? Sorry. It goes <laughs> off. Whatever that is. Oh my God. And uh, they start launching rockets at him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? He's the finisher. Right? I beg he's, your pardon. He gets things done quick. Yeah, he's he's taken no <laughs> shortcuts. He's not fooling around. Yeah. So one rocket goes towards Spidey. He webs it and does a little centrifugal thing because somehow that deactivates the mechanics inside. I'll believe it. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Spidey said it, so I'll believe it. And then the second one fires at him. He's like, "Uh oh, another one." Another <laughs> one. <laughs> DJ Khaled. Oh That's another one thing one. I forgot to mention about Aladdin. It's when it cuts to the credits you hear. <clears throat> Another one, <laughs> DJ, DJ Khaled, Khaled and Will Smith. And he goes, yo, Prince Lee, come out of bed. Oh, my God. The crossover so, we good. didn't think we needed and we actually didn't. Yeah. Anyway, Spider-Man finds the tr- the car, sorry, that the finisher is launching these rockets from. And Spidey's like, all right, since this is the car it came from, uh, it's only fair that I lead it back to the very same place. It's only fair, obviously. So now this rocket's just about to launch into this car that's got people in it. So that, it's got the finisher and like his goons. Yeah. I mean, you know. And it kablooms. It destroys the car. It completely totals it. Does it kill everyone inside? No, they get out and run away. Which okay. I'm like, look at the car. It's toast. How would anyone what survive that? What the fuck? That? You would instantly die. Like. Yeah, but this guy runs off. He cracks open the door and the finisher's inside. And then Spider-Man starts interrogating him, being like, Dude, tell me everything you know about a man named Parker and, Parker and his relation with the Red Skull. And this guy's like, yes, I'll talk, fine. It'll make it easier for me. <laughs> and Spider-Man's like, think, man, think. His first name was Richard. It happened after the war. And he's like, Richard Parker, of course. How could I ever forget? And then we go, flashback. Of course. And we see Red Skull talking with the finisher. And the finishers all like, wait, no, sorry. Red Skull's all like, there's a double agent in our organization. You know what that means? And the finisher's like, yes, another task for me. And Red Skull's like, he betrayed me. He must not only die, but he must be dishonored. The world must think that he has been a traitor to his own country. So pretty much uh, they find out Richard Parker was a double agent. And uh, Red Skull gets the finisher to... You know, set Finish. up uh, a fake plane crash. You know, he, I forget how he does okay, it. Okay, a fake plane crash. All right. Yeah, he says, Parker, I have some important papers for you to deliver to me. They must not fall into the Americans' hands. So uh, Red Skull's like, the finisher will drive you to the airport. Remember, this mission is highly critical. And uh, so we see the finisher at the airport and Richard and Mary are about to get on the plane. And the finisher says, you will find a chart with your destination clearly indicated inside the cockpit. And Richard Parker's like, the controls, they're not responding properly. <coughs> Uh-oh. This is the skull's doing. He's learnt the truth about us at last. 
and then plane blows up. Okay. But so they're definitely dead. Yeah, they're definitely dead. Okay. Unless. No. <laughs> oh, God. Because remember they did that in Amazing Spider-Man too. Yeah. We see the plane go down and crash, but then they added, they're going to have that scene where he comes back. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. That's fucking oh, maybe, maybe, he, there's, maybe there's another deleted scene where he finds a parachute. He gave himself the spider serum because <laughs> only people in his <laughs> in his DNA can use it. Right? It would be so funny if Spider-Man's like, so how did you survive? And he's like. We all have our secrets. And he goes, <laughs> he swings away. <laughs> His dad's also Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wish that was in the movie. I wish. I would have made it like, that would have been the cherry on top. Oh, my God. Right after Gwen Stacy's death. Fuck yeah. Right after he, she fucking dies. Good Wait. Lord. Oh, sorry. I feel like that scene where he talks to his dad was meant to be like what motivates him to become a Spider-Man again. Yeah. Because you know how he ends up watching Gwen's graduation speech or something? Yeah. And that's what gets him motivated. Because the, the, the graduation speech, speech is that, just literally foreshadowing. Yeah, that can be purpose for anything you need it to be. Yeah. At the start, it's foreshadowing for her death because she's like, you know, we're all mortal. We all die someday. Yeah. Especially because we're teenagers and we do things that are... Irresponsible. Stupid, yeah. And then later when Peter's watching it, it's, she doesn't say any of that at all. She says, if things get hard, you have to move on. You have to be the stronger <laughs> person. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, she didn't say that. Yeah, what it's, the fuck? Yeah. Unless it's a different part of the speech. It could have been a really long speech. Yeah. I mean, it does cut between the speech and him. Yeah. I think it's meant to be the part he missed. Yeah. But it is also intercutting between her speech and Exactly, him. So and him, like, yeah. Could be anything, honestly. I don't know. Maybe it's just a different speech. Maybe. But yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, so Red Skull and the Finisher blew up Peter's parents, which is kind of fucked up. Yeah, a little bit. Hey, just a tad. Then Red Skull makes this fake membership card to, <laughs> to also Wait, what? cover his tracks. <laughs> fake the, the one that Spider Man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were saying he made one for himself. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. Like, hold on. They not the Red Skull Club. <laughs> anyway, Spider Man's like, wait, so Parker <clears throat> wasn't a traitor? He was a United Sta- States secret agent, right? Just because Spider Man has to spill everything out. Oh, God. <laughs> everything. And. The finisher dies right there. <laughs> okay. okay, sure. That's uh, fine. Spider Man's hands, technically, because he made that rocket fly into his. <gasps> Is his that the car. first person that Spider Man's killed? Oh, definitely not. He's okay. killed so many people, <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure. I was excited there for a second. But also, he kind of killed himself because he launched the rocket. The rocket just went back and hit him. Oh, yeah. I'm using Zack Snyder logic. <laughs> yeah, you are actually using Zack Snyder logic. Have you heard him defend Batman yeah. v Superman where it's yeah. like, well, you know, those bad guys deserve to get killed by Batman because they had explosives in their trucks and Batman just blew up the explosives they already had in their trucks. <laughs> so technically, you know, maybe they shouldn't have been around those explosives. <laughs> he actually says that. What the fuck? I'm like, excuse that's me, like Zack. Fucking, that's... Like sympathizing with terrible people logic. That's like, yeah. you know, maybe mm. she shouldn't have been wearing that skirt, Pretty you know, much. like he, she was kind of asking for it. Like yeah. release the Snyder cut. <laughs> yeah, release the Snyder <laughs> cut. Fucking hell. No, don't. I don't no, give please. a shit. Yeah. Let Justice League be dead in the water. Please. Fucking finally. <laughs> Spam is like, my parents died as heroes and now I'm going to prove it. And, uh, He's swinging around. He's, oh, yeah, he goes back to Red Skull because he's got to tie off all loose ends. He's like, there he is. I knew my spider sense would lead me to him. And Red Skull's like, who's that up in the shadows? He's just chilling on a little throne, Red Skull is, you know? Yeah, just as you do. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing, just chilling out. Spider-Man comes in. Red Skull starts shooting, like, guns out of his throne armrests. He presses a button, guns start shooting out of his chair. Yeah. Oh, nice. I wish I had one of those. Yeah. Spidey's dodging it, you know. In this Spidey style. Yeah. Some knights start attacking him. It's oh a whole my thing. God. I've and got... you know how you said something about he opens his chest? 
Red Skull opens his chest and he's got a cannon. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, <laughs> how did I? Wait, hold on. <laughs> That's so weird. He literally opens his chest. What the fuck? You yeah. know, you know when you said like, oh, you know, you know, just wait for the, like the rest of the issue. I was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, opens his chest and he shoots a laser out of it, but it doesn't do anything. The Spider-Man just tackles him. Oh god! But when he does that, the laser fires off and explodes uh, his command chair's power source. So then there's a big explosion. Red Skull gets knocked out and gets lost somewhere in the fire. Spidey escapes. And uh, he notices Richard Parker's membership card in his pocket got a little, a little bit sizzled in the fire. Oh no! But <clears throat> he take he peels off the top of it, and underneath, it reveals uh, a different membership card for the U.S. <laughs> government. Okay. <laughs> and he Where says, is this going? <laughs> My dad's credentials as an American uh, counter spy, answerable only to the USA. That's why he was murdered. He'd been fighting the enemies of our country, fighting Nazis and fascists as a secret double agent. Then the last panel, we see Spidey swinging away and he's like, after all these years, all the heartbreak, all the shame, I've redeemed his honor and I've cleared his name. <coughs> Never again will I bemoan my secret identity or toy with the thought of giving it up. I finally vindicated the father and mother, whom I never know, but no one but Spider-Man could have done it. So you see, like we're saying before, this issue ends on a more optimistic note. Spider-Man's like, yes, I've did it. I've yeah, he's actually achieved something, and he's like not just moping about. He's actually achieved something. Yeah, I've yeah. honored my parents that I never met, but you know, carrying on the Parker legacy. That's nice. And because it's annual, oh, there's all this extra stuff at the end too. There's a one-page panel of the Daily Bugle. And just Jameson running in being like, where's Parker? And Robbie Robertson's like, don't you remember? You just fired him. <laughs> and Betty oh, Brant's like, God. for the thousandth time. It wouldn't be an issue without this. <laughs> yeah, they had to throw that in there at the end just yeah. for a little go- goff. Just for a little goff. <laughs> for a little goof. And then we see this other thing where it's like, what if Peter Parker was a baseball star? I'm like, I don't give a shit about this. Yeah. Uh, then we see... A map of New York City. It shows like where everyone's located, Gwen's house, Peter and Harry's, Daily Bugle, etc. Uh, then there's this other page, it's like what what a Spidey was drawn by other comic publishers at the time. And you know, oh, it's got, yeah, the Mickey Mouse one. Yeah, it's it's got like Archie and Charlie Brown and Is it technically DC. Mighty Mouse, not Mickey Mouse? No, I think this is meant to be Mickey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is ironic because he <laughs> Disney does own Marvel Spider, now. So. Yeah. But uh, this is the last <clears> thing <throat> I want to talk about this issue. It was a long one because it's annual. It was 50 pages. So we have this little extra comic at the end here. And it's of Stan Lee, Larry Leiber, and John Romita. And it's a little satire comic, actually, of them coming up with their Spidey issues, which I thought was a bit amusing because there's a panel where uh, – John Romita's like, that's it, brilliant. Uh, wait, sorry, I missed a bit. Oh, no, no, this is the bit. Sorry. Oh, my God. Sorry, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> sorry, Thomas. But John Romita's like, that's it, brilliant. What a great everyday human experience. Aunt May has a heartburn. Spidey must get her green <laughs> pills. Heartburn. Green and Larry, pills. Larry Leiber's meant to be like the straight man in the scenario. He's like, this, is, this sounds terrible. And John Romita's like, what's terrible? And then it goes like... Pretty much becomes a sketch I where John Romita and Stanley it. are insane, going like, and then uh, she gets one of the pills stuck in her throat. Oh my god! And John Romita's like, he gives her a helpful smack between her shoulder blades, and then Larry <coughs> leaves like, cut that out. After the last story conference, I was homesick for a week. Then John Romita's like, but we got a story, and then they start going into more crazy <coughs> ideas. Stanley's like. Imagine Spidey confined to house while uh, crime runs wild. What what to do? And uh, John Romita says he has, hires a housekeeper who's really Doctor Doom in disguise. And yeah, it goes. It just keeps escalating. Like it does, where they just yeah. keep yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I laughed so hard. I have to put it up on social media. So go on Instagram if you want to see this. But John Romita hits the dab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He literally hits the dab. Like there is no fucking the shadow pose, of a doubt as to what it is. The pose is perfect. He's got one arm and he's got his head in one arm. It's covering his face. Yeah, he's got his extended out. <laughs> yeah. His it's head insane. is like perfectly in the like crease of his arm. Yeah. But yeah. There you go. That was amusing little bonus. Jesus, I'm comment. tired after that. Yeah, it was a long one. Yeah. It was 50 pages. So, yeah. <sighs> I, I think uh, right now we'll take a little little break for the listeners. Uh, yep. And we'll, if you guys remember, if you listened last week, we ended okay. on a bit of a cliffhanger where it cut off right as someone entered the room. Yeah. You guys are probably wondering, like, maybe we forgot about it and just didn't want to follow up continuity. No, no, no. It happened. It happened last week. We just didn't want to do like a weird cold opening at the start, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, not for the new yeah. listeners. So yeah. uh, let, let, let's cut to the tape last week where uh, we recorded what happened after. It's us. What? How is this possible? They look exactly like us except, wait, why is that one holding a baguette? I, it does me. I am Mike. Oh, why? What? Wait, Who, what? Yeah, what's and what's the deal with the you, Sammy? The other Sammy it looks not not quite right. Like yeah, like a CGI version. Hello, my name is Sammy. I am a robot. Okay, what, what the fuck? So they've perfected like near perfected human features, skin, but they haven't perfected the voice. Which you, know what? you can get in your what, Google Maps and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. kind of weird. I'm really confused how this is happening and where these versions of us are coming from. Well, you'll see. Uh, when the Hollywood creases came from the mansion, see, to get Ben Mandelson. And, <laughs> and uh, who was the other one? Uh, you mean Eric Banner? Uh, Eric Banner. It ripped the hole in the multiverse. I am Mike from the French multiverse. Oh my God, there's a French multiverse? Hang hang on, a French multiverse? What does that even mean? It's like Earth, but only French is left. Wait, you mean somehow there's a multiverse where France took over the world? No, it's just the whole world evolved to be France. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so it's got all the countries, but everyone is French. Precise. They all sound like these. They hold the baguette. We like a baguette. Not, not really. Uh, Why wait, do so you all hold baguettes? Well, you were French. What's what we do? Oh, true. Yeah. You want some frogs' legs? I, I got some in my jacket. Hey, a French fry is actually French. Oh, in my universe, all fries are French fries. Oh, okay, true. Wait, what's the deal with the? So it's a robot, a robot Sammy, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so are you from a multiverse of robots or are you like just a robot from another multiverse that looks like Sammy for some reason? Precisely, I am created by Sammy in another multiverse because she is lazy and cannot finish her degree. Okay, so in that universe, did Mike create a robot Mike as well? No. Oh. I mean. That's sad. Yes. He is, oh, he did? He is halfway through creating said robot. Okay. So what What, what are you guys here for? What? Do you, what do you, what's your mission? Well, you see, we're from different multiverses, obviously. But when the multiverse uh, split happened, it wasn't just us that came through the dimension. Uh. So there, there is a French Sammy around here as well. And uh, I don't know what the deal is with Robot Sammy, if there's no other Robot Mike. Maybe it's just the regular Mike. It is a Robot Mike, but his processor chip has gone missing. Oh, so just just half, half a built a Robot Mike from Dimension... What's your Dimension called? Eight. Dimension Eight. Okay. If I can kind of grasp this, so... French Mike is looking for French Sammy and Robot Sammy is looking for half-built Robot Mike. Yes. Okay, okay. Well, 
as you guys know, I'm sure you guys do the Peter Palmer podcast in your dimensions as well. Is this correct? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> I, Sorry. I, I do beat the Palmer podcast, but it's not called Peter Palmer podcast. I had to think about what you meant by that for a second. Okay. It's, it's about Spider-Man, right? It's about Spider-Man, but it's what? called... The Pedro Pascal podcast. Oh, the Pedro Pascal. I love that actor. What? He's an actor. <laughs> Wait, he, hold on. In our universe, he, he's Spider-Man. He does alter ego Spider-Man. Oh, Pedro Pascal. That is that yeah, a but French it's a, name? It's a little, a little joke because Stan Lee in the first issue of the Spider-Man, he called Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Oh, okay. It's a little goof for the fans. Sounds sounds familiar. Yeah, hey, I can relate uh, to that. So, in in your multiverse, other Sammy, I don't know what to call you, Robot Sammy, is uh is Spider Man a robot or or is Spider Man just like Spider Man? Spider Man is yes, Spider Man. Okay, I feel okay, like this robot well, uh, Dimension Eight is probably a lot like ours, but everyone is really smart and knows how to build robots, probably. Yes. The robots are smarter now, so they oh, want to take over the world. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, what the fuck? Jeez. Excuse me? Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Um. Yeah, as you guys as, as you, you guys know, we we got a report called the... Honestly. Actually, wait, no, we, we just finished the podcast, didn't we? I think that these guys are safe. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, but, you know, you guys should probably get out of here because we have to plan for next week's uh, podcast. I oh sure I know what you mean, but uh, you guys gonna help me find the Madame uh, from my dimension? I guess just not like immediately. Maybe you guys come back <sighs> next week. By next week, I mean the week after next week, so you guys can like share your updates on the podcast. Because next week will be you know this week, if you know what I mean. That may go no sense to my French mind, but I will go. I'll leave you guys to record podcast. Don't worry, French Mike. It may sense to me. I am smarter than you. You Yeah, see, French, uh, not French, uh, robot Sammy understands. Goodbye. Have a nice <laughs> week. Okay. Why does French Mike keep sneezing? <clears throat> I got the cold, uh, but I better go. Bye-bye. Okay, bye, bye. And so we're back. Uh, and yeah, as you heard in that clip just before, we told those guys not to come in this week. So hopefully, you know, hopefully they listen. Yeah, hopefully they did listen. They'll come in next week and we can. I mean, one of them is a robot. So I, I hope yeah, yeah. she would like, you know. I would... think she knows. Yeah. So we'll get back into that. Uh, next week, we'll help them find their, their podcast co-hosts from their universes. Cool. So okay. back into it. We've got one more issue to go. One more issue. This will I'll be a long episode this get week. Get through this one pretty fine. quickly. Yeah. Um, issue 66 with the Amazing Spider-Man, The Madness of Mysterio. Mysterio returns. He's got some, you know, spooky clouds of poofiness behind him. Well, and it okay. looks like he's huge. Like look how he has like the pier in front of him and oh. it's like all miniatures and stuff. I like so like, it's like a, basically like oh, so it's um, miniatures. Yeah. They're miniatures. So it reveals in the next panel that it's actually oh. just like a miniature. Do you, do you reckon in Spider-Man far from home, he's <laughs> actually made a miniature <laughs> version of Rome <laughs> and he shrunk everyone with Ant-Man technology with pin <gasps> particles. <laughs> Mike has discovered his fucking plot. Oh my god! This is what Tom Holland was talking about when he said, hey, "There's a really weird twist in the movie." Yes. I will just really make everyone's jaw from. drop, <laughs> everyone's miniatures. <laughs> and John Watts was like, "No, everyone's gonna hate this." Oh my god! Go. If that ends up happening, I'm gonna kill myself. If no. that ends up happening, I will give you five dollars. Is that it? Okay, fine. Ten dollars. Okay, thanks. You still owe me twenty dollars for saying Black Panther will get the best picture. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll give you thirty dollars combined. Okay. Okay, but only if that's yeah, right. that's a fun little theory. Yeah, <laughs> fun little theory. That's that might happen. Okay, so Mysterio has got his stage set. He's got his plan is completed. After all these months, he will have his long-awaited fatal revenge upon the unsuspected Spider-Man. 
Um, so, and then, wait, sorry. What was the last Mysterio issue we read? Do you remember? Um, no, and it doesn't have a reminder either. Usually what, it does. Stan? For some reason, Mysterio's like speech bubbles are yellow. Don't know about that, but. Maybe he's oriental. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Does he look like Jake Gyllenhaal? Let me see. He doesn't. He looks like an old man with a bowl <laughs> cut. <laughs> doesn't look like Jake Gyllenhaal at all. Okay, okay. What the hell? Sorry, I gotta take my undo my belt real quick because it's like I ate too much pizza. <laughs> I'm basically Deadpool. That's why he wears um, spandex. Okay, Some go. things never change in this podcast. <laughs> no. Back to basics. Back to back basics. Back to basics. Okay, so Mysterio um, has set up like an amusement park tabletop model, and it's like a mock up. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say an immune system. <laughs> immune system. He set up Sorry. an immune system. An amusement park. Um, um, miniature and it's the kind of mock-ups that he used to make when he did special effects in Hollywood. Oh, yes, yes. So that's his explanation. Oh, I for hope it. he's still a special effects guy. In- I, I was just thinking that when I was reading it, like this issue, I was like, I hope <laughs> I, I can just imagine like in the movie later down the Jack track, Jake Gyllenhaal was like, Oh yeah, I used to work in special effects in Hollywood. Yeah. Maybe he's a VFX <laughs> artist. Now, yeah. Cause they've updated it. He's like, I work on the CGI for the motion pictures. <laughs> I wonder what... And his yeah. illusions are all CGI. Wait, in the other multiverses, did the snap happen? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's what I'm thinking too. Because like he's from another multiverse, right? Yeah. Does he know who Thanos is and like what happened there? Hmm. Anyway. They, they might have, they would have a Thanos, but maybe they haven't met him. Yeah. I just haven't met you yet. That's what oh, Michael Bublé is Michael singing. Bublé is Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bublé is Mysterio. <laughs> I mean, you know. Okay, I was going to say something really fucked up and depressing. But no, mind. don't. You, brought, you said that last week, actually, <laughs> about Michael Bublé's son. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. He this survived, is... though, didn't he, his son? No, yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, exactly. He's just yeah. sick. It's really actually yeah. sad. It's genuinely very heartbreaking. Okay, now anyways. you know why I love Catch-22 <laughs> so much and um, like other things like Ballad of Buster Scruggs and stuff like that, black comedy. Okay. I was like, what's the connection? Dark comedy. I don't know. Okay. Someone getting hanged and finding the humor out of that. Um, <clears throat> or the beauty. A, that's a good bit in Buster Scruggs. Yeah. <laughs> James Franco. <laughs> first time. Um, great meme, great meme. We're I'm still on the first page of the comic oh, book. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Mysterio is going over um basically his history as a bad guy, going like, you know, Spider Man defeated me one time when I battled Just him last me. year. He thought he defeated me, but you know, I'm gonna catch him now because his guard is lowered because he hasn't heard from me in a while. Um he explains how he escaped from jail. He like um volunteered himself as the prison pharmacist. Which, okay, sure, they'd let that happen in prison. Um, And he slowly but surely stole all the chemicals he needed to create a distraction to get him to escape. And he escaped through the laundry chute, so there you go. Because laundry doesn't get done at the actual prison, apparently, at this prison. It gets done somewhere else. A truck takes it. Isn't there a movie (coughs) where someone escapes prison through the laundry chute? I want a wallet. (laughs) No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <coughs> a lot of near death experiences on this podcast. <coughs> like Max staring at me from halfway across the room. This is weird. I feel like I'm having a dream right now. It's not real. <coughs> anyway. So we cut back to okay, Mysterio's finished explaining and we're back to um, Spidey swinging through the town, city, whatever it is. And he goes, I left my clothes and my camera atop a roof of the Daily Bugle while I was battling the vulture. I better go find it. And he sees it in all the rubble of the Daily Bugle and he grabs his jacket, but his um, he can't find his camera. Oh, no, no. He finds it eventually. Um, uh, yeah. So he swings over to the Daily Bugle. And, oh, no, no, he swings home, then he swings to the Daily Bugle, but, like, he has, like, a really not-so-good sleep. He's, like, worrying about Aunt May and Harry not being able to find his dad. And oh, his, that's still happening. Yeah, that's still happening. And Norman being the Green Goblin and Gwen, not, like, being like not seeing him and J. Jonah Jameson, like, firing him. <clears throat> so after a restless, sleepless night, Peter wakes up and he's getting ready for the day. 
He puts his Sparty suit on, then puts his civilian clothes over the top, except um, he's got a rip in his shirt, so he's got to wear his jacket over the top of his shirt so if he doesn't want his Sparty suit showing. Um, he shows up to the Daily Bugle and he goes to Betty Brandt. She's like, oh, I don't know. You shouldn't really see him right now. He's, like, not really uh, – in the best mood, but he storms in anyway. And J. Jonah Jameson turns around and goes, you get out of my office before I throw you out. But I wanted to tell you, I sit out. So he walks out anyway. Um, and J. Jonah Jameson's like, Oh, I don't need that kid. What a fucking idiot. Like I got someone else to take photos of the vulture. And, um, just as he says that his assistant hands him the photos. I'm pretty sure it's Ned. It doesn't say who it is, but it looks like Ned. And the photos are literally just like the worst photos ever. It's like the corner of the photo is Vulture's wings. And he's like, <laughs> what? These are the Vulture? And he gets so fucking triggered, dude. He's like. Um, oh, this is the other photographer. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. The one they randomly pulled off the street or whatever. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, and um, Betty Brown's like, do you want me to see if I can find Parker for you? He goes, no, don't say it. Don't say it. It's all a dream. The pain, the pain. Like he's being so dramatic. <laughs> anyway, so we're back to Parker on the street and he's looking really sad because he's looking at his bike and obviously he couldn't get any money for the photos. He's like, you know, struggling a lot with money. He goes, I got to sell you, baby. I know I love you so much, but I got to, I got to sell you. I need money. So he goes to the pawn shop and he goes, Hey, look, buy my bike and they're like okay we'll buy it but this is how much we'll buy it for and he goes but that's less than half than what it cost me and it's almost new and he goes bro i don't care so anyway he sells it anyway he gets the money he's really upset by it but you know that's life Mm. and then all of a sudden smoke a figure forming that can only mean and everyone's running away and guess who it is it's Mysterio. No, it's Red Skull. Oh, um, no. What? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no, it's not Red Skull. It's Mysterio. Wow. Um, he goes, the time has come to show myself once more. Um, Sorry, I just read something interesting because I was trying to find what the previous Mysterio issue was, but I found this instead. Uh, it might be a bit of a spoiler for an upcoming <laughs> issue, but it's also an issue we've already read. Okay. Because do you remember the second issue of The Amazing Spider-Man? Not really. Where the Tinkerer was... Oh, the Tinkerer. Yeah, working with these aliens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're like, why are they aliens? And this is never brought up ever again. Yeah. Apparently it's been retconned that the aliens were Mysterio <laughs> and his men in disguise. <laughs> working with the Tinkerer. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, why? Where'd you read that? It's on, on Wikipedia because it's trying to find like mysterious appearances. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. They retconned it, lol. Yeah, so those like weren't aliens. That was uh, Mysterio. Okay. That's really disappointing. And I can't find what the last Mysterio appearance was, but I remember it was like one that didn't have Mysterio on the cover. Yeah. Because it was revealed in the issue that Mysterio is behind whatever happened. Because he and had an like, assistant. Oh. And like, because in this he says, I was defeated the last time. And when he explains it, it's like him and his, and his assistant got webbed up. Like that's what the panel looked like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Because I remember it was really interesting because it was like Spidey was going insane or something. And we find out Mysterio was like making him feel like he was going insane. Oh, is that the one? That sounds like familiar. Yeah. Uh, we've read so many in the last six months. And I'm just like. I remember it was good though. The yeah. last one we read. Anyway. Um, yeah. So Mysterio is terrorizing the city and then he suddenly disappears. And Peter's about to go into full spotty mode. But he's like, wait, no. Before I rush, wait a minute, I, why am I being so eager? Even if I nab him, what'll Peter Parker get out of it? Let the police take him. I'm sick of being the fool guy. And he goes, I'm not forgetting my oath. If someone's in danger, I'll still knock myself out to help. But every time I go tearing out after some nutty costume creep, the only one who ends up getting it in the neck is me, which is kind of true, actually. Like, no one's getting harmed right now. Like, why should he, you know, worry about this mm-hmm. guy? He's just like, creating trouble for no reason. Anyway, so we see Mysterio. He's actually under a grate in the pathway. He's like, oh, I was great. certain Spider-Man would have seen me, but it's all right. I can afford to be patient, basically. Um, and Spidey's walking through the street. You know, his worries are getting worse. And all of a sudden, someone passes him with beautiful blonde hair. 
She says, Peter. Gwen. It's Gwen. She says, I've been searching all over for you. I was afraid I'd never find you. What? Gwen, I don't get it. I, I thought you were through with me. And she grabs him and holds him in her arms. She goes, oh, no, Peter, no. Dad explains everything. Oh, how you yeah, weren't to right. blame for what happened. And he says, Gwendy, it's more than I dared to hope. All this time, I've been feeling sorry for myself, unwilling to admit. I was just carrying a king-sized torch for you. Oh, Peter. Peter, it was though as my whole world had come to an end, but not anymore. <laughs> it's some cute shit. They hug, and, you know. This is so funny how between last week, this year, and this, Spider-Man went to Algeria and found yeah. this, <laughs> this whole subplot about his parents. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> it's like back to our reg- regularly scheduled program. Pretty much. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Life's like that, you know. Anyway. And probably never brought up again, his parents, because that one issue pretty much ties off all loose ends. Yeah. Anyway. Actually, you know, I know there's other things like spinoffs where they bring them back because they get retconned as S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Oh, really? You know yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, who cares about who Richard cares? Parker? Red, Red Skull. Richard Parker. Red Skull cares. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So they are walking arm in arm. Um, being cute as fuck and they end up at a jazz club and they're, you know, talking lovey dovey. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so while directly across town, Daily Bugle City editor, Joe Robertson joins Gwen's dad for lunch for a somewhat different reason. Um, and they sit down to talk about Spider-Man. So, um, Captain Stacy's like, Hey, you say you want to talk about Spider-Man? That's right. Captain Stacy, I know that you're interested in the web slinger also. He's, um, Captain Stacy responds, he's the one who saved the lives of my daughter Gwen and myself when we were menaced by the kingpin. And Joe's like, that's, that's just it. He saved Jameson and me too when the vulture almost killed us, but Jonah never admitted it. Um, so they say, oh, we have a bit in common. Um, and Joe just explains, my interest in Spider-Man is professional. I'd like to unearth enough information about him to make a page one story. Um, but I suspect we both feel he's misunderstood says captain stacy um and then they both kind of agree like oh i wish we could convince jameson that he's wrong about the web slinger his hatred of him is almost psychotic and they're like questioning you know what what are his motives do you think you know something must have happened in his past blah 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 and they finish their lunch and they're like i bet we both have a reason to feel that he knows us at any rate well let's keep in touch so they kind of both feel like they know spider-man for some reason yeah because they've been, they've both been saved by him and had like personal experiences with him. I think I know that guy. Hey, I think I know that guy. What's that from? Yeah, what is that from? Hey, I think I know that guy. It's like some yeah. sort of. Mo- it's either a time travel movie or a movie where a character with his alter ego. Well, I know that like um, thingy says to Jarvis, real Jarvis, human Jarvis, like, hey, have we oh, ever yeah, met an him? End game. Yeah, an end game. We ever met him? No, sir. Anyway, and whether that little meeting bodes good or bad for Spidey, only time will tell. Meanwhile, Spidey's riding the subway and he's looking pretty chuffed. He's pretty happy. He's like, no matter how many things are going wrong in my life, I still have Gwen. And it makes me so happy. Cute as fuck. What happened to MJ? I don't know. She got a haircut. That's what happened. (laughs) I'm so confused with... Both of their relationships. Relationships, yeah. I don't know. Hey, like, fine. The way everyone talks about these old comics is like, oh, he loved Gwen, then they fell out of love, she died, and then MJ came into the picture. But That's it's like, really what not is how going it on? Happens. It's like everyone's yeah. sleeping with each other because Harry's into both of them too. I think that is what was like, what is happening, like low key, because I think that was yeah. like, because they had like the kind of like hippie like love revolution of like that time didn't they where like everybody was like kind of free love that's what it was called like free love man like you know anyway what's that thing stanley says in endgame he's like he says something like that not war yeah yeah anyway but no i think like even then like if if it's not that i think old people just assume that young people just sleep with each other all the time yeah because it's since been retconned where whenever they talk back to these times, Peter's like, oh, I only had eyes for Gwen. It was all about Gwen. Mm, From exactly. day one, it was just me and Gwen. Yeah. Like Spider-Man Blue. It's like mm. MJ is not even part of that. Yeah. And, like, there's, like, a run where he's, like, um, sitting down and talking to – I don't know if this is, like, in the Amazing Spider-Man canon, but I've um, – 
read that one where he's sitting down with Norman and having a chat with him. And he's saying like, oh, "Oh, I wish you never killed Gwen. Like she was the only like good thing in my life. Like I hate you so much for it. But then they sit down and have a laugh about it somehow. It's kind of (laughs) weird. Anyway. They come out of it buddies. Yeah, literally. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. You killed my girlfriend. He's like, I did. (laughs) No, I did. Hey. (laughs) Hey, you guy. (laughs) Anyway. So he hops off the bus and guess who he sees on the street? It's MJ. not MJ. No, oh. it's Harry. Harry. He sees Harry. He's like, well, speak of the devil. Cause he was thinking about Harry and, um, he asks him any word from your dad yet, Harry. And he goes, uh, he sees his face. He goes, no, don't bother answering. I can tell by your face. You got to get a hold of yourself, boy. It can't be all that bad. I mean, he can't be far. Maybe he's at his factory. Let's go see. And Harry looks pretty shook. So um, they show up there and they ask the security guard, but the security guard's like, nah, your father wasn't here, man. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then we see someone looking through the curtains. Like, who's that? Looks Ooh. a lot like Harry, but no, it's Norman. And he's in his green goblin outfit. And he says, what? the fools, do they think Norman Osborne wouldn't have a dozen ways to enter his own factory without being seen? As a multi-powered green goblin, I can glide over the fence or the gate. Um, and he says... Ugh. Let him search for me, him, and that hover that holier than thou roommate of his. Um, that roommate, why does it make my why does he make my blood boil? My memory is getting clear with each <laughs> passing second. I bet I won't be in the dark much longer. That's the, that's that's enough Green Goblin shenanigans. That's all we get for this issue. So yeah, Pete and oh, okay. Norman drive home. I know. Oh, yeah, this is a Mysterio comic. Yeah. (laughs) What's all this? Pete and Harry are about to drive home, but Pete's like, hey, can you drop me me off at Aunt May's? I haven't seen her for a while, so I've got to go check on her. So he drops him him off, and he hears from inside Aunt May's door, oh, no. And he's like, that's her voice. What's wrong? What's happening in there? So he literally fucking busts the door down. He, like, it's so dramatic. Look at this. He, like, pushes the door with both his hands, and literally the door breaks. I'm just like, okay. Cool. Casual. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> I would be really mad if someone did that to my door just because I was screaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what if you were actually screaming for a reason? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem likely. And if I was, I don't know. It's my fate, I guess. <laughs> so right. Aunt May was actually not screaming at anything that was wrong. It was just the TV had some. Oh, she was watching Psycho. <laughs> no, it wasn't the TV. Sorry. She was screaming at what was on the TV. And oh, she's it's... watching the footy. <laughs> <laughs> just watching the footy. Oh, my God. No, Mysterio is on the TV talking about how oh! he's going to, like, fucking kill everyone or some shit. Okay. And um, it's like, Spider-Man, if you don't meet me at our meeting place, then I'm going to kill everyone. Wait, so she was just screaming or was she saying stuff? No, she was saying, oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. But she's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> you know like how old people do when they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> they're pointing. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm going to fall off the chair. Okay, <laughs> just don't do that again. But okay. oh, <laughs> in, that, in that regard of that note, Aunt May collapses and faints. <laughs> And he puts her down on the couch. And he's like, well, i got to do something. He puts her down. Um, he's got, that's, like, that's enough from you. <laughs> that's enough Too from many you, health man. scares. Just put you out of your misery. <laughs> I've had enough of this. Just put you out of misery. Don't worry about you anymore. Um, Pete's like, i got to do something about this. So he calls um, MJ's aunt or whatever the fuck. Yeah, Anna Watson. Anna Watson. Come Watkins. look after May, whatever. And he goes full spidey and swings through the city to find Mysterio. And they go to their meeting place and mm. he's like, Mysterio, I'm going to get you. And he goes to punch him, but he disappears. And um, he's having a really bad time getting hit and thwocked and z- wrapped and zocked. You know what this fight reminds me of? Because you actually can't see Mysterio. He's invisible. Mm. But, you know, in Monsters, Inc., when Randall's like yeah. <laughs> bashing up Sully, he's getting choked. And Mike was like, he's like, Hey, what's wrong, man? He's like trying to tell him like all this stuff. He's like, that's right. <laughs> um, it's a good movie. I might watch that tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really good. It's been good. a while. It's got some really good gags in it, dude. Like all the Mac Wazowski bits are really good. I remember always being weird out about, you know, when, what's it called when they take all the fur off 
the oh yeah the code six three something <laughs> like yeah I remember yeah. always being weirded out but how he looked when they took... yeah he looks disgusting I was like, oh. <laughs> you know what I'm always weirded out by how much Randall looks like Steve Buscemi <laughs> <laughs> because he yeah. obviously voiced they always him. make the characters somewhat look like the actors in Pixar yeah. like Sully looks like a John Goodman like oh. yeah like like you know kind of like the guy <laughs> and Billy Crystal <laughs> looks like, a like fucking exactly olive. like yeah <laughs> no I mean I, he has a pretty round head he doesn't Billy have Crystal. one eye though well well if he had one eye he'd look like <laughs> Mike Wazowski basically have you seen when <laughs> Harry met Sally no yeah, it's, it's all right. Billy Crystal, that's his name. Hey. Don't wear it out. Have you seen How's Moving Castle English yes. dub? Yes. <laughs> I, wait, I told you, remember I was watching that at work the yeah, other day. Did. Was that English dub though? Yeah, it was, um, no, it was the English version, not the subbed version. Yeah, yeah. English dub. Yeah, I like yeah, the English. Crystal. I usually like. And Christian Bale. Um, yeah, I was, well, that's exactly the, ri- I was just about to explain. It's <laughs> rough to me. No, 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 no good. Uh, I usually like to watch the sub versions of those Ghibli films, but Howl's Moving Castle is my only exception because I love Christian Bale's performance as Howl. It's really good. Yeah. I like the Ghibli do the dubs well because they get they proper do. actors in and yeah. put effort into it. Hey, you know that guy from Hunger Games plays um, the little kid assistant, the wizard Josh assistant? Yeah. yeah. And then he's also in Ponyo. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. I think. Am I making that up? Pretty sure he's in Ponyo. Anyway. I remember being very confused when Ponyo came out, like the English version in Australia. Because I remember we watched it in Japanese class like a year before okay. it was released here in Australia. And that really confused me as a kid. I was like, how did we watch it if it's only coming out? Oh, now? yeah, I see. Because we would what have watched mean. the Japanese version, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Exactly. You would have, yeah. Miley Cyrus is in that, isn't she? Oh. As who? Pon no, not Ponyo. Is she Ponyo? I don't know. Anyway. I don't remember it very well. It's been First a time bit. I watched it, it was the Japanese version. I thought the boy was a girl. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, the fight where Mysterio's, must Mysterio's, he's mustard Mysterio's invisible. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so Spidey's like, I'm sick of this. So he clings to the roof out of the smoke and um, Mysterio reveals himself. He's like, well, since your finish is almost here, I'll reveal myself in order to point out your final resting place. He points to a tabletop model of an amusement park. And... Um, Mysterio's like, I'm going to shrink you down and put you there, you little shit. Oh, um, like Ant-Man. Yeah, basically. So Spidey dives for Mysterio and he goes goes full ham at him, but it turns out he's just bashing up his cloak full Doctor Strange style. Um, and it was all a trick to get him in front of the fucking laser to shrink him and he zaps him, fucking nearly killing Spider-Man. He's like, help me. What's happening to me? Everything's spinning around. I feel like I'm dying. And he collapses and he's like, no, it can't be. It can't. He gets up. The smoke is clearing. Why do I feel so strange? And he looks up and Mysterio's huge and he's in the miniature um, amusement park. Uh, Next. Just like in Far From Home. Spider. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's that issue. Okay. Nothing happened in it. Yeah. But you know, I'm going to stick by my far from home theory, even though it's most definitely not true. <laughs> I think it would be really funny if the twist is that he had a miniature fu- Rome. <laughs> yeah, they found out they've been they've been shrunk <laughs> and placed into a Rome, a miniature Rome. What is that movie? Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, like that. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. And it zooms out, and it's just on a table. <laughs> the whole movie <laughs> took place on a table. Nice. Mysterio just has a bunch of pin particles. Maybe he shrunk Rome. That's a bit excessive. How do you shrink the country without ruining the like ocean? You know what I mean? How did Ultron lift an entire country? I feel like shrinking an entire country is a lot more hard than turning a country into a meteor or a chunk of a country. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Because like if you shrink a country, wait, are you shrinking the actual land or just the contents of the country? I like just like, the things on the land. Yeah. Okay, that's more. Okay, that's way more plausible than the ultra Ultron thing. Yeah, I'd say. But so. Then what if a plane tries to land in Rome and it's just like, what the fuck? Where Wait, did Rome whoa. go? <laughs> That'd be funny. Anyway, that's my issue. There you go. Oh, that was fun. Well, uh, 
That's the podcast too. No, it's not. We have oh. a final segment of the show. Oh, we do. Yeah. Uh, did we get fan mail? We probably didn't. But let's find out right now. Hey. That's the only one that sticks in my brain because I really <laughs> like that one the best. Yeah. Because it's like, sounds like, um. It sounds like you pitch corrected my voice, did you? Or did you just slow it down? No, I didn't do anything to it. It <laughs> sounds slowed down. Like, did you change the tempo or something? No. I didn't do anything to any of the voice tracks because I couldn't be bothered. And plus really? you only sent them to me in MP3 format, so I couldn't. Oh. It, that one really sounds like you edited something. Like it's been stretched out. Maybe you accidentally stretched it or something. No, I didn't. I actually didn't. It's wow. like literally if you listen to the original and then listen to that, it's the exact same. That's weird. Whoops. Anyways, uh, let's check the socials. I don't think much happened, so this will be quick. Uh, Thomas tweeted in. We can always rely on Thomas to tweet yeah. in and call us out on how bad we are. Yeah. Uh, we'll do a little um, a positive sandwich. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Jesus Christ, so, uh, I'm already disappointed. He he said, I also kind of got that brief description of your issue, your dinguses. That's not a positive sandwich. You've got to start with a positive. No. You don't call a sandwich a bread sandwich. You call what's inside. No, you got to have positive is bread, negative is inside, and positive no, no, is... No, that's, that's wrong. Okay. It's, it's, if it's a, a salami sandwich, it's got bread, salami, then it's bread. Yeah, then what's the bread? It's the sandwich. Then what's the middle, metaphorically? Look at the contents. So it's like a ham and cheese sandwich. So if it's a positive sandwich, it's the contents. So it's sandwiched in between two negatives. That's terrible. Yeah. Then you're starting with a negative and ending in with a negative. That's so sad. Okay, maybe I should have made a negative sandwich then. But I'm making a positive sandwich. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not the positive. It, that's the way it's been weighed out. Okay, Gil. Sorry. I'm sorry. Then the positive is you guys deserve a Grammy for your jingles. Musical oh, yeah. Musical masterpieces. This made me happy. Thank you, Thomas. And then this one's, not too, this one's not too negative, but he just said, here's a tweet you can read out in next week's social segment. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And we read it, so. Any comments? I on almost our didn't want to read it out of spite. You should have. No. No. You've got to commit. You've got to commit. Uh, dude, I don't think we've got any Instagram comments. That's a shame. Let's have a look. Let's waste more time on this podcast. This probably has gone for like three hours already. It's almost two hours, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe not for the listeners, but for us, it's been two hours. Yeah. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Oh, there's a, there's another glorious comment from one of those music guys. Oh, yo, you're the one they sleep in on. Wait, no, this is the same one I read last week. Never mind. <laughs> I just read it again. There was one that's just like fire emojis. So, you know, they think uh, we make spicy hot content. Spicy. So spicy. Yeah, so we've got not much fan mail or anything this week. It's a shame. Anyways, that was... The podcast for this week, episode two, season three. Yay. So, yeah, that <laughs> that's so it. excited, Sammy. We did it, I guess. Dora, Dora, Dora. The uh, let us know your favorite issue from this week. Was it Spider-Man going to Algeria and learning his parents were, uh, were double agents? Or was it Mysterio shrinks Spider-Man and puts him in an amusement park? Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Yeah, it wasn't even resolved. We need to start looking like ahead at what the issues are. So we can out the like, cliffhangers. Yeah. So we can pair them up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think they've all been cliffhangers recently though because they're they trying have, to make it serialized. Yeah, exactly. So it's not just like the same formula like it was back in the day. Like Spider-Man beats a guy up and then yeah. that's they've got it. got to rope people in to read the next issue. Yeah. Anyways, if you want to follow us, keep up to date, uh, you can do that at Peter Palmer Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And also contact us on Gmail, peterpowerpod at gmail.com. And who knows, we might feature you in our fan mail segment. Yeah. You want to be a guest? Message us. You could probably come on. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> we'll take anyone as long as you don't come on here and just like ruin Slander it. us. Yeah. yeah. That's really rude. Don't do that. We might have a guest on next week. A surprise guest that you've not seen before. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't knife it up that much. It might be someone we've had on before. Out of, of the Carell. two guests we've had. Yeah. But, yeah. It's Buff Corral. It's not Buff Corral. I, <laughs> I wish, wish it was. 
Yeah, that's it. That's the show. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. I'm going to bed. <laughs>